Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. We're going to start first with our uh, welcome to the December 15th, 2 p.m. legislative session. We're going to start first with a couple public hearings that we have. Um, these are standard, pretty much end of the year things, but Mr. Uh, Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there are two public hearings for the 2 o'clock session of the legislature. Uh, one is regarding local law number 6 of 2022, the other is local law number 7 of 2022. Public hearing on the budget has been noticed for 7 o'clock this evening, and so this will not be a hearing on the budget. Notice is hereby given the county legislature, the county of Oswego will meet at the legislative chambers 46 East Bridge Street, Oswego, New York, 13126 at 2 o'clock p.m. on the 15th day of December 2022. The purpose of holding a public hearing on local law number 6 of the year 2022 entitled the local law overriding the tax levy limit for fiscal year 2023. In the event that the seating capacity of legislative chambers is exceeded, the hearing may be moved to the adjacent county courthouse in Eastern Idaho. <coughs> I order the county legislature today, November 10, 2022, Betsy Sherman Saunders, clerk. Any persons wishing to be heard on proposed local law number six of 2022 overriding the tax levy limit for fiscal year 2023, please step forward and state your name. Mr. Chairman, there being no persons wishing to be heard regarding proposed local law number 6 of 2022, I request you declare the public hearing closed at 2.04 p.m. Hold on. Notice of public hearing. Notice is hereby given that the county legislature of the county of Oswego will meet at the legislative chambers, 46 East Bridge Street, Oswego, New York, 13126, at 2 o'clock p.m. on the 15th day of December 2022, for the purpose of holding a public hearing on local law number 7 of the year 2022, a local law entitled amending local law number three of 2021 providing for the salaries of certain elected county officers of the county of Oswego. The event that the seating capacity of the legislative chambers has exceeded, the hearing may be moved to the adjacent county courthouse on Eastern United Street. I order the county legislature dated November 10, 2022, Betsy Sherman Saunders Clark. Any persons wishing to be heard regarding proposed local law number seven of 2022 regarding salaries of certain elected officials, please step forward and state your name. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, somebody started to stand up. What's that you like? Somebody started to stand up? Yeah, I have a list. I'm going to call them. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, okay, would uh, Jessica Steele come forward and note that this is a comment on the salaries for the elected officials? And um, if you could keep your comments to five minutes or less in the interest of fairness. Absolutely. Keeping, everyone keep in mind that this is a hearing, not a debate. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, I don't want to make sure you can hear me. I feel like I'm accepting my Grammy over here. I'm a little nervous. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen of the legislature, good afternoon. My name is Jessica Steele. I'm a social welfare examiner at the Oswego County Department of Social Services. I also hold two other jobs, one as a waitress and another as a board member in the town of Orwell. I'm here today because I'm struggling. Financially, I'm barely making ends meet, even with my three paychecks. I see my coworkers facing the same financial struggle every day. We have so many vacant positions, everyone is carrying a larger workload than recommended by the state standards. Somehow, some way, we've managed to get by. Everyone from the bottom to the top has stepped up. Our supervisors, our principals, our administrators, they're all processing cases just to make sure people and public health and safety is being addressed in a timely fashion. I commend all my coworkers and management for the amount of effort that has been put forth. However we've managed to get by, it won't sustain forever. Burnout is happening at an advanced rate. It's unavoidable with the staff shortages. And before I go any further, I want to apologize. I know what I have to say today is not going to make many of you very happy, but it has to be said. I was taught from the time I was a little girl to stand up for what I believe in. And that's what I'm here today to do. When I learned that you guys intended on giving yourselves a raise, I was like, what about us? I emailed each and every one of you. I took the time on my Thanksgiving day after I put my daughter to bed, put an hour and a half time and effort into it to let you know how I feel and how much we're struggling. You know how many of you wrote me back? Four. You should be ashamed of yourself and to your constituents and to the people that put you in office. But you can't even address me now. I pleaded for a raise for all of us in our bargaining unit. And I beg that you pass the MOU sent over to you, knowing that you full well 
are willing to give yourself raises and stipends from COVID money that you won't give us. And I apologize and I'm shaking. I'm so upset. I'm struggling. As elected officials, we've offered to each and every one of you many times to come visit us at DSS, see what we do every day, see not just what caseworkers do, but what we do at DSS and everybody else in our bargaining unit, the people at 911. I can't speak about them because I don't know about their jobs, but I know about ours. Do you know how very few of you have taken us up on that offer? And as elected officials voting on something, you need to do your due diligence to educate yourself on what you're voting on. That's part of your job, to know what you're voting on. That's what your constituents elect you for, to know that when you pass that vote, you've educated yourself. You made a decision that you thoroughly researched. And the fact that so few of you have taken us up on that, discouraging is not even the word. I even had one of you email me back, and I won't say who, said that you can't spend a day doing what we do and do a day in our shoes because you have to work too. I won't say who that is, but I don't think your constituents would like to know that you didn't feel that this job was important too, that they elected you for. It's rumored, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I might do some fact checks on this, that you plan on spending $2 million of American Rescue Plan money on baseball fields, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know that to be true, but I do know these facts to be true, and I apologize, this was just given to me this morning. There's $12,500 is going to be given to three sisters, three sisters' gifts to create an organic, an organic tea bar. $100,000 is going to be given to Southern Fair. Part of that, including their projects, beer service upgrades. Beer service upgrades. That's our American Rescue Plan? Really? I'm completely in favor of supporting small business. I know many small business owners. I want everybody to succeed. But shouldn't your priority be putting those funds towards face, forward-facing essential workers that ensure public health and safety? Premium pay and bonuses, is a, that's an approved spending source for that COVID relief money. I know we have some in the small town where I live, where I'm on the board. I know the post standard was sending someone out today. What's that? Five minutes. Huh? Five minutes. No. There's, a, there's a warning uh, that you're close to your five minute period. Just in the interest of keeping it fair for us. Okay. I'll, it wasn't that wasn't five minutes. Well, what's the buzzer for? The buzzer for. All right, well. That was five minutes? May I, may I please request to finish up? Let her finish. Yes, Thank please. you. I, I know the post standard is supposed to send someone out today and to this evening, and I really hope they're here and some other media outlets are, because obviously there needs to be some more attention drawn to this manner. Any tactics used thus far have made zero difference. Maybe the more light we can shine on the problem, the better a solution, the possibility of a solution. And not that long ago, Mr. Rutherup, you told the local media, and I have the clip here right in my phone, and I quote, if it was just money, we'd give them more money. But that I don't think is the issue. Probably contributes, but that doesn't seem to be the issue. We can't even get them to apply. Mr. Chairman, one directly correlates to the other. People aren't applying because you aren't paying them. Type this in just the name alone, are making 15 something an hour. They're not just typists, they're dealing with angry people walking to a desk every day. So here I am today begging you desperate to pass the MOU that our bargaining unit sent over. This includes a $750 retention bonus every six months for the next two years, I believe it was, an 8% increase in pay, a $50 per month bonus for all COVID essential workers for each month we work during COVID, in an internal and external pay equity study. This is for all employees in our bargaining unit. We're all for one and one for all. We love Oswego and love serving our community, but we should be compensated fairly. Your solution to the current problem, the Human Resource Committee sent over a raise for the caseworkers. This is how many people you wanted to give a raise to.
And this is how many people are in our bargaining unit at Peter Race. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your time and I thank you for the extended time. Thank you. And I'll see you at 7. Thank you. Um, just for a moment of clarity here, because of the process, the procedures, our uh, historical way the meetings are, uh, are laid out along with the hearings, I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit here, and uh, just for clarity, and, and for the people that are signed up to speak next, you're more than welcome still to come, but just know that later on today, the county, I'm going to make that announcement again, but the county has reached out to this CSEA that represents many of the rank and file workers to discuss opening contract negotiations in early 2023, which is nearly a year ahead of schedule. We recognize the need to adjust worker compensation to address rising costs for our employees and to address recruitment and retention challenges. We're optimistic we can come to an agreement that works for both sides. But you are raising just separately. The county is having an independent compensation study done. Now, having said that, uh, that may or may not influence if uh, people want to still come forward and speak. But could I have Eric Crown? Again, <coughs> sir, in the interest of fairness, for all five minutes, please. Thank you. Good afternoon. Is this the first time I've ever spoken in one of these um, meetings? Um, I will apologize in advance if I go a little off topic. My name is Eric Kronk. I work for the Department of Social Services as a principal social welfare examiner. For those of you unfamiliar with the title, I answer to the Director of Assistance Programs, Gidget Stevens. I supervise senior social welfare examiners and social welfare examiners who determine eligibility for benefits administered by the agency. My main area of expertise is SNAP and HEAP. I am also an active member of the local Elk Lodge, which is an organization dedicated to assisting those in need to help make our community a better place. I am stating this so you will understand that what I have to say today comes from a place of concern of the state of our county. Ever since the beginning of the COVID pandemic, the Department of Social Services has been short-staffed and overworked. There are many reasons for this. The primary reason I am sure is the compensation of these jobs and the inequality of pay as compared to other occupations. That is an issue for the union, and I hope some headway will be made on that at the next negotiations. It's been reported that the governing body of this county has decided to spend federal COVID grants for a variety of projects. I feel that the money could be better spent by rewarding the frontline workers who have worked under stressful and exhausting conditions throughout the pandemic. Case in point is the grant for the new lights for the baseball fields. As a youth-related organization, why aren't the families of the children that use these fields conducting fundraising activities to raise money for this project? As a member of the Elks Lodge, I would be more than happy to assist in organizing an event to promote this project. I know that my fellow Lodge members and community would support this. I have also seen reports that the department heads of the various county departments were each given bonuses for their work during the pandemic. I was never informed or asked if I or my staff would like a bonus. While the department heads have difficult jobs, I think it's quite disrespectful that the highest paid employees of the county are given bonuses for doing their job, while the lowest paid employees of the county are compensated at such a rate that they are income eligible for some of the very programs that we administer. This to me makes absolutely no sense, that the people that you represent and employ cannot earn enough to make ends meet. Yet your highest compensated employees are rewarded. I am very discouraged to work for a government agency where the people doing the governing appear to have so little regard for their constituents. I find it shameful that those in charge accepted these bonuses knowing the full well the condition of the people who work for them. And that you want to now also give yourselves raises. Granted, thank you for reaching out to start negotiations again, but it's too little, too late. I was told that the governing body of this county congratulated themselves for saving several million dollars in unfilled vacancies in various departments. Do you honestly believe that your work was the reason for the savings? Do you understand that you applauding yourselves for saving all that money due to unfilled vacancies is a slap in the face to those of us who have to do the additional work is, that is left undone because of a vacancy? 
what Ms. Steele said earlier is correct. I have sat in, I have had meetings to have interviews with people that have applied for a job, accepted an interview appointment, and not shown up. Because we don't get paid enough to do the jobs that under the <coughs> difficult condition, conditions that we have to. As a principal social welfare examiner, I thought my job would be to work, the, do the work necessary to support my director and help those I supervise grow to become leaders of the future. Instead, every day, I try my hardest to do my job, assist my seniors who I supervise in their jobs, and help the examiners process the work so that the members of our community will receive assistance they need in a timely manner. I'm sorry I find it insulting that you know so little about the work conditions that we face daily. I truly hope the savings from the vacant positions will be put aside and available during the next round of negotiations with the union. I find it more difficult every day to remember that the job I have is one I love, that the people I work for and who work for me receive the respect and support from those elected to office. I could easily go to work in another county or work for another agency in this county and be compensated at a much higher rate. And every day it gets harder for me to find a reason <coughs> not to do so. Thank you. Would Shauna Reddick please come forward? Again, you have five minutes. Thank you. Okay. Um. Employees at any other job don't give themselves raises. They earn them by doing a job well done or have been a loyal worker. We haven't exactly seen that from you. You pick and choose who you want to help when it's to your advantage. You ignore many of your constituents. You haven't looked into any of the serious allegations that have been addressed. Your true colors are showing. As you can see, my face has acquired some color as much as I don't have um, I have issues with DSS and, and, and Stacy at times. I have fought for them in the past to try to give them raises because when they don't have enough staff, they're not getting paid enough, they're not gonna stay. You're gonna see children with more of these. You're gonna see children neglected and abused because they're not gonna be able to handle all those cases. Uh, there'll be similar marks like this, like I was saying, in foster care and even by their own parents and, and kids who have died and um, families and kids who need to get the proper help by DSS will be ended up getting to be ignored and not given the proper help. Um, Hilton, I noticed that it was said he was getting raised. I don't know much about him except however he was concerning Galaxy Cruise in August. No compassion, no understanding. One of the suspects left town and nothing more has been said. Kind of like all those suspicious deaths. Not one officer, not one legislator ever seemed to be concerned about the allegations concerning their own officers dealing or doing drugs. Not one person came up and wanted to look into it. Your silence speaks volumes. As I mentioned, my face has got some color to it, as some of you may even think I deserve it, mostly doing to show what's really going on in Oswego County. You may even be proud knowing people who work for the county did this. Those CPS workers will be held accountable. Legal processes will be moving forward with possible of paying fines or jail time. Losing friends and family knowing they could do something like this. Getting dragged into court claiming they're not, they're, or claiming they're innocent with no evidence that they are. They may have support to vouch for them in some way. CPS accuses clients while they proclaim they're innocent, losing those that we love and care about, not believing our words, and trying to make us pay for a crime we didn't commit. CPS falsely accuses people, and how do you think CPS or a caseworker would feel being falsely accused of this? Falsely accusing someone is a crime that has many legal and social consequences. Will they try to put us in jail or suffer unnecessary consequences? They get away scot-free. This isn't real, it's theater makeup. Sometimes you need to go dramatic to grab somebody's attention. The legislators and the Human Services Committee know about some of the false allegations, along with, um, the upper officials have done nothing to help their citizens. Just another reason a raise does not deserve. You don't hold those accountable, whether it's Stacey Alford or those, those caseworkers, supervisors, 
who are involved in committing crimes within the agency. In fact, Shannon Fording from Jordan's case is still working there. We all know she should be fired. I'm sorry, resigned. You hire people to cover up DSS's mistakes, illegal activities, and their mess ups. That race should go to those who need it and actually deserve it. And not all caseworkers are bad. There are some really good ones out there, and they deserve the, um, the pay that they deserve. What have you truly done for the community? Oswego County needs a homeless shelter, not a warming station. Not all those who are homeless are addicts or lazy bums. Some have financial struggles due to an innocent nature. Some have kids which DSS will sort them because they have no shelter to go to. Harborview Apartments, wasting millions of dollars and no one protects that investment. No front desk security 24-7 to keep the drug dealers out, the addicts that hang out and pass out there that so many others have a problem with. There is no attempt on even having a tenant association group. And how long did it take you guys to take care of that smoke in Fulton? You've shown that you'd rather put yourself first in the community. If you really love the community, giving yourselves a raise would have been far from your mind. The public and people would have come first. We can clearly see it's all about the money. People who are, in so many words, criminals get raises. People who aren't doing their job well. There has been only one person sitting here without a shadow of a doubt that he loves the people more than a paycheck. Can any of you say the same? Thank you. You're welcome. Would, um, apologize on the name, but Brenda Luchestansky, she come forward? Again, you have five minutes. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I stand before you today as a grade B supervisor for family services. I'd hoped to be giving a very different address today. I had hoped for the opportunity to be thanking you for showing your appreciation for the members of CSEA co-op unit and the work that they do as demonstrated by salary increases and COVID bonuses at least equal to what you have given to the managers and to one another. One year ago, you heard many passionate speeches of many union members pleading with you for fair and just compensation for all of the work that we do. Sadly, the situation has continued to erode. The negotiation contract was passed and did provide some justice, especially for those at the bottom of the wage scales, but it did not do enough. There were approximately 20% of our membership who voted no. Sadly, many of them are no longer employed with the county as they were easily able to find superior employment opportunities elsewhere. They could simply no longer afford to continue working with us. We lost not only our colleagues, but we lost a tremendous level of experience and education, dedication, that is going to take us years to recover from. Many who left made the decision with a lot of struggle. They didn't do it lightly, and compensation being better would have kept some of them in the county. There was a recent article stating that this legislature has you know, given yourselves a 6% increase. A local law passed last year stated there'd be no increase until 2025, yet your part-time job will receive twice the percentage increase that we are looking at for our full-time employment for the next year. I also feel it is only fair and just that if some in the county are receiving COVID pay, then all who work through those terrible, terrible months deserve the same. Many of our colleagues were still meeting with our clients face to face, some doing so in full hazmat suits. If the managers deserve to be compensated, then so do the frontline workers. <coughs> As a grade B supervisor, I see people leaving work every day with expressions of frustrated exhaustion. Yet the minute they meet one another, they, they still manage to have a sincere, hey, have a good night and I'll see you tomorrow. I wish that the ladies and gentlemen in this chamber would agree to show the same level of support, <coughs> respect, and appreciation for my colleagues and the work that we do as we share with one another. We are all overworked and overwhelmed. We need more people to stay. The very best way that you can help us accomplish this would be to grant the COVID pay <coughs> equal to that of the manager's group and an increase in wages at least what you are giving yourselves. 
And to speak to Eric's comment on the unfilled positions and all the money you have saved, please remember that when many, many of the positions are federally reimbursed, if you do not spend that money in salaries, you do not get it back from the federal <coughs> government. So in essence, you are denying the community money that would otherwise be coming in and being able to be spent at those small businesses, those family-owned businesses, and creating more revenue as those monies double and triple within our community. That is all I have. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Um, thank you. Would uh, Patty Famel please come forward? I do. Good afternoon. My name is Patty Hamwell. I live in the town of Oswego, and it's great to have some other speakers here today. Um, I also oppose the resolution to increase the legislator salaries by 6%. And as a former <coughs> HR professional, um, I have to give this legislature some low grades in the following areas. And one is transparency in government. And that has been something I have been speaking about at these meetings, and I hope that other people will start noticing that this legislature governs like no one's watching. And now, maybe they've just tripped themselves up because people back there are watching. And the workers of Oswego County are wanting their fair share. So that's one area. In the ARPA process, the transparency, I've talked about this, and I, I couldn't even tell you how many foils it takes to find out <coughs> who's on the chairman's secret task force. Um, the lack of online um, information, it, the complexity of trying to get to it, um, is are obstacles to anybody who wants to be involved in their local government. Another area, I don't think the um, tentative budget is online, for instance, for 2023. Identifying priority areas to use the ARPA money and other monies in using evidence-based initiatives in decision-making to solve complex problems you don't get a high grade in that. This failure has led to Oswego County's dismal health assessment ranking of 50 out of 62 counties. And our public health, social services, child poverty, addiction services, gun violence initiatives, all these to name a few, need a lot more um, evidence-based initiatives. Failure to invest in your own county workforce. You're hearing about that today. So I'm going to try not to restate, but the November vacancy position report showed that there were an excess of 130 vacant positions and that the county had saved over $7 million because of positions that were not filled. This is not a good thing. <laughs> because the, that deficiency leads to increased liability for the county in many areas, and as one of the speakers was stated, sometimes a loss in reimbursement funds. Everyone should watch the uh, November 28th, I think it was, Human Services Committee meeting, it's online, so that you can see just exactly what department heads are dealing with. The county workforce is hemorrhaging. It's bleeding out. Social services is trying to provide services when 42% of their positions are vacant. Well, this legislative body may want to give that a try. If we reduce the number of legislators by 42%, that would mean we could get by with maybe 14 legislators. And that sounds 
like a good idea to me. Brenda Yerden, please come forward. You have five minutes. Good afternoon. I did prepare what I was going to say. I'm going to go off it a little bit, if you'll forgive me. My name is Brenda Yerden. I'm a resident of Oswego County and also an employee of the county. I do work at DSS like some of the others here. I'm related to two of you, Herb and Mike, so I'd like to... It's not held against me. Well, I thank you for that. <laughs> I would like to begin by telling you about a recent experience I had. I live in Lacona, and I travel Route 3 to get to my job in Mexico. It was that day in November when we had that heavy snowfall. The roads were quite slippery that morning. As I was coming up the road on Route 3 right before Fairways and Dreams, a tractor trailer had couldn't make it up the hill and the cab was on the shoulder and the trailer was in the roadway. Well, that's a blind hill. I was lucky I got around and there were no oncoming traffic. So I called 911 to report this because it was <coughs> hazardous. Nobody answered when I called. I called, it rang nine times. I hung up. Nobody answered. But a few minutes later, somebody did call me back to see, you know, what I needed. I was surprised because if it was a true emergency, what would happen if there was no answer to my call? I mean, what if, what if I couldn't take that call? What if that call back to me endangered my life or my loved one's life or maybe one of your family members' lives? And do you know why that is? Because 911 is down an entire shift of people. <coughs> Same situation for the DMV. They're down a whole office worth of people. What's going to happen? Are we going to close one of the offices? We're going to have more lines, and then we're going to have more people complaining because they have to wait in line, take time off from work? The employees of this county provide vital services every day. If not for your county plow, driver, plow drivers, would you be able to make it to your meetings? How about your doctor appointments? Would an ambulance be able to transport your family member in a medical emergency? If the roads weren't clear? During the pandemic, we were considered essential employees, so we worked tirelessly to provide services to your constituents. Some of us worked at our place of employment, some of us worked from home, using our own internet, which we were not reimbursed for, using our own paper, our own cartridges, ink cartridges, and nobody went without their benefits, I might add. There was never a lapse of coverage in those because of your frontline workers. Like someone has said, department heads are to receive bonuses for saving the county money by continuing to keep things running with staff shortages by not filling vacancies. Your department heads deserve a bonus, but we don't. You're going to vote today to give yourselves a raise. I had a legislator email me. Well, let me go back. I have emailed all of you twice in the last two months. I received two replies. Two. Not even an acknowledgement. Not even from my family members. Neither one of them even responded to me. One legislator told me he feels that you deserve raises because after all of his expenses, he earns $15 an hour as a legislator. He also acknowledged that he's not trying to raise a family on that wage. Do you know that our typist starting rate starts at $15.56 an hour? That's before medical and dental insurance and union dues. Then factor in utilities, gas to travel to work, mortgage, food, clothing, everything else necessary to maintain a home and a family. Don't forget daycare costs because many of your employees have small children they have to pay to be able to come to work and give your constituents what they need. There are no retention bonuses. There are no longevity increases. Our fellow coworkers are leaving at an alarming rate. The cost of our medical insur insurance increases every year. I sat at my desk the other day because I got an email and my insurance is going up again. Everything has gone up, except for my pay. I'm getting 3% this year. You guys are gonna get six. You do not compensate the people who work and keep this county running smoothly. We spend money here, we keep businesses afloat. 
Our paychecks directly benefit the economy here in Oswego County. And it's funny because today none of us were paid. There was a glitch in the payroll system. We haven't gotten our pay. A lot of our coworkers, their accounts are in, they're overdrafted because we didn't get our pay today. I barely have enough gas to get home because I don't have a savings account. I don't have extra money. I don't even bring home $500 a week working for the county. Do we matter? How many of us have to leave before you wake up? What's the final straw before you realize that the damage your behaviors and decisions have on your constitu constituents? Those of us who remain are overworked, bitter, and exhausted. We work hard for you every day, and you deserve to give us the same courtesy. Thank you. Would Jess Madison please come forward? <coughs> Guys, this is my first meeting I've ever attended. So know that if I'm here, it's pretty serious. My name is Jessica Madison, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Social Welfare Examiner from the Department of Social Services, and also a SNAP recipient. If many of you don't know what that is, I receive food stamps as well. Okay? I've been working for the department for four years now, and I've been in SWE for two. There's a lot of topics in the last few years I could discuss, but I'm trying to make this really short and sweet so you guys really understand where I'm coming from. Kind of to go off Brenda, everything's really short, short staff right now, so wake up one morning and your house is on fire. You call 911, no one's there to answer. You have no house now, so guess where you're coming? <coughs> Department of Social Services. We're them people that help you out when you're, you don't know who to turn to. I'm your solid piece of ground when chaos is going in your life. I have to remain, remain that calmness, that matureness, and to help you. I know some of you seem very bored and lazy, but someone in it very, I'm not interested in what I'm saying, but this has to come out. We are the absolute heart of Oswego County. We are what keeps Oswego County going during the tough times, and when you don't have a good heart, you just fail. You decided on raises and our worth on statistics. They're not statistics, they're not case numbers, they're people. They're people behind these numbers. When we're working overtime, it's not just a case load, it's a family that needs food, it's propane tanks that need heat, it's someone that needs shelter. We can't just push them off and be like, there's tomorrow. They, they might not have tomorrow. We, <coughs> right now, at Department of Social Services, the two, the two years I can tell, you have some really good-hearted people and genuine people that work there, but it's fading fast. And if you don't have a compassion in this job, you just might not work, you can't work there. And when there's not people, enough people to fill the staff, families and children are falling through these crack, cracks. I'm not asking for an outrageous solution. I'm just asking for the pay and support <coughs> for everyone, for you guys would not want to do this job. I want to feel backed up and appreciated by my fellow union le legislators and union leaders, excuse me, union leaders. I'm so nervous. I can barely get away from my desk for one and a half hours right now. It's bothering me to know that I have to stand in a group in front of people who don't understand the deaths of my job. While there's children at my desk who need to be fed, there's houses that need to be paid, and there's just heat that has to be provided. I am pleading my worth. I care about my fellow coworkers. I care about the person who's about to fill my position when I leave. I care about our community I, and the people that I help every day in your community. This is your community that I am helping every single day to keep it afloat. DSS, 911, EMS, Highway Patrol. We are the heart of a Swiggle County at the end of the day. We are underpaid, understaffed, and overworked. And today, like Brenda said, nobody got their paycheck. My paycheck is still not there. I am negative $100. I have three kids in my home, and two of them are your grandchildren, and I can't pay it. But guess what? The first email I got today was to donate to a family who lost their mom. And guess what? Everybody donated. Does that tell you something? I just want you to guys to understand where we're coming from. It's very personal now. We are so understaffed. We are, I hear my phone rings every day. Please help me. Please help me. Please help me, please. That's all I'm asking. 
I love my job and I really, really love to help people, but I can't do that if I'm not supported as well. And that is everything I have to say. Okay, that concludes the public hearing. Public hearing is declared closed at 2.42. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move now to our regular uh, uh, our regular session. Uh, we're going to call the order. Can the clerk please call the roll. Michael Yardin. Present. Herbert Yardin. Present. Edward Gilson. Here. David Holtz. Here. Roy Vigil. Here. John Martino. Here. Frank Bombardo. Here. Paul House. Here. James Weatherup. Here. Mary Ellen Chesbro. Here. Linda Lockham and Mark Excused. Richard Klein. Present. Patrick Twist. Here. Stephen Walpole. Here. Nathan Evans. Here. James Scanlon. Here. Lori Magano. Here. Robert Wilmot. Here. Marie Shaw. Here. Tim Stahl. Here. Noelle Samuelson. Here. James Karasek. Here. Michael Soloway. Here. Mark Greco. Here. Frank Castilia. What did you miss it? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 present, one excused. You have a quorum. Thank you. Would you please lead us in the invitation? <laughs> During this holiday season, may we continue to stand together beyond this meeting, beyond this season, caring for one another by loving our neighbors as ourselves. May we always have the strength to bring light into the world and inspire those around us. Let us be thankful for the love, hope, and joy that this day brings us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And now the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. We've had a minute or a, uh, a look at the minutes from the Sioux County Legislature regular meeting on November 10th. Second. 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 Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. At this time, I'd like to recognize uh, Nisha Anderson, the Corrections Officer with the Sheriff's Department, for her retirement. So, if the Public Safety Committee, Sheriff Hilton and Nisha Anderson, please come forward. officer with the county. Uh, you've heard me say before that it's one of the toughest jobs in law enforcement, but especially I myself started as a corrections officer 35 years ago in the jail. And uh, back then we didn't have female corrections officers. We had uh, matrons. And it was thanks to the effort of Naisha and a, a small group of uh, women employees at the time that fought for equal rights and the, the right to work the blocks with male officers. <coughs> And uh, every female corrections officer in this state can thank her and that group of women that fought for those equal rights. So, thank you for that. Thank 
Introduction to visitors. Thank you, there are none. Uh, public speakers on resolutions of the day. Now, they must be pertaining <coughs> to the resolutions for this meeting, the 2 o'clock meeting. Is there any Mr. Evans? Looks like I have three here. Thank you. In the interest of fairness, and in, in also in protocol, again, I'm going to call you forward, but there must be resolutions for this 2 o'clock meeting. Jessica Steele. Oh, I can come back up. If you have something on a resolution for the day that is included in the 2 o'clock meeting. Uh, the resolution is your race, correct? No. 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 Okay, then I'll be back later. <laughs> no Thank you. Yep. Oh, you're welcome. Um, David Fairs. <laughs> Thank you again. Five minutes. Would you know which resolution you're speaking to, sir? Uh, to be honest, I don't. I'll just uh, state relative to uh, the resolution about raises for the legislature specifically, but also to look forward, not just this year, but into the future. Which okay. might, might sir, just for clarity, we've had the public hearing. That would have been your chance to speak then. I'm going to allow it if you could be brief, but it's on resolutions of the day for our Very public well. Thank you, Chairman. And GC3 says you're you know, voting on the uh, elected officials. That's what GC3 you says. You are correct, sir. Then you do have, you do have a resolution to speak on. Regardless of resolution, I just want to say that um, relative to raises for the legislature, <coughs> when you apply and are accepted for a job, you know the pay, you know the job. You don't get a raise until your boss decides you get a raise. So I'm not at all in favor of passing a legislation for raises for this legislature. If you say we need more money, do it for the following term of legislatures to come in. So they know what the pay is and they can decide. Uh, in full disclosure, I worked on the Fulton Planning Commission. I turn back my stipend every year. I view it as a calling, not as a job. I would like to see you all do the same, but to be paid for your expenses as a reimbursement. If you're looking for more money, go get a job. Thank you, and I do stand corrected on uh, format. Mary Lowe, would you like to come forward? <coughs> Thank you, you have five minutes. Okay. I'm not sure where to stand here. My name is Mary Lowe. I live in the town of Oswego. Can you, is this working? Yes. Okay. Um, you've heard some really powerful speakers. I'm not going to be one of those, but, uh, but those were really sobering comments. And I hope that all of you really heard them. My issues today, I've got two, are, can seem sort of muted compared to that, but they are related because they have to do with how you communicate with the public, whether you communicate with the public and the ARPA money, the funds which can be used in some of the ways that these other people have suggested. So, several issues related to this legislative body have come to my attention since I began last January to try to understand how our county's 22 plus million ARPA funds are being spent. But today I want to highlight <coughs> two issues that could be called housekeeping. 
or procedural. They have to do with how you run your meetings, like this one. My first concern is to make sure that you legislators are on the same page as the ARP task force concerning what you are expected to do when you allocate ARP funds for various proposed projects later today. My second, I want to urge you to come into compliance with all of our neighboring counties on when you permit the public citizens like me to bring up their concerns at your monthly <coughs> meetings. When I first observed your voting, you voting on the use of ARPA money, it was on June 9th, and some of you wanted to discuss and presumably modify some proposal or other on that long list of proposals. Chair Weatherup said that wasn't allowed, that you had to vote the whole list up or down. You probably remember that. <coughs> when I um, okay. Later, on November 3rd, I was encouraged to attend an ARP task force meeting where that group made the county's first official review of many potential projects. I was pleased to observe the deliberations that included some thoughtful give and take among the men, and they were all men, by the way, but in light of what Mr. Weatherup had not allowed, I was surprised to hear at least two members of that task force say, at about, say about at least two proposals that they would vote yes on those proposals, even though they were quite unsure about what sums to, be, to recommend. And they voted yes because they said that the sums could be debated by the whole legislature later. It would be up to you to make those final decisions. This seemed contradictory to me. I'm here not to encourage you to vote for or against any ARP proposed project, but to encourage you to debate elements of any project, including the sums to be awarded, if you have concerns about any individual project. I'm here to encourage you to do what your own task force is counting, expects you to do, and apparently is counting on you to do it. The second issue I want to bring up is one that makes our county a complete outlier among all the counties surrounding us, probably among all the counties in the state, and that is that you do not allow the public to speak to you about concerns they have during your meetings like this one. You only allow this after you have adjourned. After, that is, when many legislators have left the room. Think about it. That is insulting. It is a slap in the face to the public. That is how an Oswego citizen who served as this county's attorney for this very body, how he reacted when he heard that the public can't comment until after your bloody meeting is over. When I first brought this up at your meeting last July, Chair Weathership, Weatherup, comment, his comment was that the public comment period had been moved in 2013. He later, in an email to me, said that he thought that his statement had, quote, resolved that issue. No, not at all. I've spoken to my legislator about this. He was receptive to the whole issue. He said he wanted to find out why the public comment was moved in the first place. Now that makes sense, but I haven't heard yet more about the why. Maybe too many people prattled on when you already had a full agenda, like today. Um, oh, okay. Anyway, I urge you to, use, to have one of your co uh, committees look at this issue and do something about it, because it is absurd to be the only only one that doesn't let people speak till after it's adjourned. I thank you for your time. In the interest of, in the interest of fairness, excuse me, in the interest of fairness, I in error had uh, not denied you the opportunity to speak, but if you would like to speak now on these issues. Would sure, you I've, got, I've always got more to say. If you know me, you understand that. <laughs> Again, I apologize. Oh, no problem. Thank you. I appreciate that. <coughs> Here I am again, Jessica Steele. Uh, a couple things I didn't get to tell you before. In addition to having three jobs, I'm a single mom. Um, so there's often times that I'm giving up time with my daughter so I can pay my mortgage. 
you guys are voting to give yourselves the raise today. Whether or not you pass that vote, there right now, and I just spoke to our union president in the back, there right now is an MOU to you guys listing those things that I said before you that you could take to your budget meeting tonight and pass. You could go back tonight, work some numbers, figure out that $7 million that you saved last year from our vacancies, you can compensate us. By the end of the year, you could have checks to us for COVID bonuses for everything that we worked. And as our legislator, and the fact that you have ignored us for so long. See, I've only been here two years. That's why you haven't seen me much. But I'm going to be back every month if I have to. Um, and if that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. I had the flu last week. And because I was hired less than two years ago, it takes me six weeks to earn one sick day. I'm taking my daughter on vacation in April. And I don't know now if I can take her or I have to take time without pay because I had the flu. And I earn time that slowly. But that's neither here nor there. As I said, I spoke to our president of our union. And there is an MOU before you with a proposal that you could fix tonight. It doesn't have to wait and open no negotiations. There's something out there now. It doesn't have to wait to give us bonuses. We are in need right now. Oh, and I'll be back again later, so it's OK. But thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Moving now to reports of county officials, reports of standing committees, reports of special committees. Mr. Chairman, for a second. Um, I attended the Workforce Development Board on November 30th. Uh, really, doing a lot of uh, exciting things in the county. And I just want to let you know that um, I'm going to share, I'm going to talk to Betsy about sharing the annual report that they have, which has uh, lots of information about the people that were uh, served through the uh, one stop uh, and, some of, and uh, some of the things that they've done during the year. Uh, and I'd like to report that because we transitioned from SUNY uh, uh, Oswego, who had helped us run it through the business office there. We're now running it in-house. Things look like they're running smoothly, and I uh, want to credit Rachel Pierce for doing a great job over here. And uh, you'll see that in an email, the annual report. You'll be interested to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving now to government courts and consumer affairs, I would uh, offer this a bit of a heading. Uh, GC1 does deal with ARPA funds. It has been referenced earlier today. But this is the latest allocation of the county's American Rescue Plan, Plan Act funds. Each of these projects has been reviewed and okayed by our ARPA task force and the relevant jurisdictional committee, <coughs> which are open to the public as well. The, the state of projects and the organizations awarded funding this month is wide ranging. These funds will aid children, veterans, families, and the elderly in our communities in addition to supporting sewer, wastewater, and other important infrastructure projects. Having said that, Res Resolution GC1 by Legislator Holtz. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution allocating funds made available to the County of Oswego to the American Rescue Plan Act to certain sub-recipients and beneficiaries. All of these uh, projects included in the resolution have been reviewed for all disabilities substantially uh, considered by the chairman of the RFPP task force. And these projects suggested a round total of $1,376,000 and $4. Thank you. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? discussion? That's for your shot. Mr. Chairman, I mentioned this before, and I just respectfully mention this again, that it does ultimately come to the legislative floor to all of us. And I think to vote in a lump is wrong, because if you're against a project, you have no way of isolating that. And therefore, I just feel you should go piece by piece. Understood, but for clarification, they all do go through their corresponding jurisdictional committee where they are vetted separately. I understand that, but it still ultimately comes to the floor, even though that committee okays it. The, the body may not, or people in the body may not. Understood. Legislator Castillo. 
Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion right now again to separate all of these and send them back. Vote on them today on their respective, commu respective committees that they were voted through for the same reasons that Legislator Shai just brought up. There are items in there that we would be in favor of, and there's items in there that we wouldn't be in favor of. And right now, today, I'm looking over, and I've looked it over for a while, there are more that I wouldn't be in favor of than I would be in favor of. So I'm asking for a motion right now to separate them and have every committee chairman bring their group forward to be voted on. Thank you. We have a second. Second by Legislator Shaw. Roll call vote, please. Thank you. Any other discussion on that? <coughs> thank you. Legislator Gilson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we've been down this road a couple of times, uh, and it's important uh, to keep, I think, government moving forward. Um, we have a process. Uh, the process has been proven. It's been found effective. Uh, we have uh, had several uh, opportunities to deliver or deliver, uh, to, to talk about these different uh, applications <coughs> in detail, and as you mentioned, the standing committees have also reviewed those. Uh, I would say, you said president, we should stick that president and move forward. It's hope I'm voting this about. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll with the uh, I've got my hand up for more discussion. The motion is to refer to committee. Well, we said, you, you asked for you know, discussion. The county right. attorney has asked you a question, sir. Your, your motion is to refer to committee, correct? Yes. Right. And now you asked for discussion. And you also yeah. called for a roll call vote, sir. And correct. We're to have that. But you didn't ask for is there any other discussion? And I have other discussion. Just give you one. Thank you. you. It's Christmas. Give me one. It's Christmas, Frank. Take it's it's Christmas, Christmas, and <laughs> you know, I hear what you know. Well, the fine legislator was, was saying about we've gone through this before and we're going to keep going through it as long as I'm here. And I remember distinctly when the first group was going to come forward, it was discussed that I figured we will just group them together because you guys don't want to be here all night long voting on each one of these. Even though they've already been through committees. So it wasn't a case of moving government forward. It's, do we have the time? No, we don't have the time. We don't want to take the time. Well, I'm sorry. This is the people's government. And if the people want you to separate it, they would have you separate it. And that's what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Yeah. Would the clerk please call the roll? Michael Yerman. No. Herbert Yerman. No. Oh. Edward Gilson. No. David Holtz. No. Roy Rehill. No. John Martino. No. Frank Bombardo. No. Paul House. No. James Weatherup. No. Mary Ellen Chesbro. No. Linda Lockwood's been marked excused. Richard Klein. No. Patrick Twist. No. Stephen Walpole. No. Nathan Evans. No. James Scanlon. No. Laura Magano. No. Robert Wilmot. No. Marie Shaw. Yes. Tim Stahl. No. Noel Samuelson. No. James Carassa. No. Michael Soloway. No. Mark Greco. No. Frank Castilia. Yes and always yes. Mr. Chairman, that's two in favor, 22 opposed, and one excused. Thank you. Back to the original resolution. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, two opposed, and one excused. Thank you. Moving now to resolution GC2 by Legislator Holtz. Mr. Chairman, I'll we'll offer this resolution. Clerk, please read the heading. Resolution adopting County of Oswego Local Law Number 6 of 2022, entitled A Local Law Overriding the Tax Levy Limit for Fiscal Year 2023. Legislator Evans. Mr. Chairman, I would uh, encourage my fellow colleagues to vote no on this particular resolution. There won't be any need uh, for us to override the tax levy. Thank you. For those in the audience who don't understand, this is a preemptive safety move in the event that our tax levy was going to be above the state uh, 
maximum it is not projected to be. So having said that, is there any other discussion? All those uh, opposed to adopting this would be a no to legislator on this uh, point. This is a resolution that's not necessarily needed. So, <coughs> all those opposed? No. No. Yeah, no. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we <laughs> yeah, yeah, so That's kind of weird. Just do it in our way. How many support it? How many are All right. How many people support the resolution? Two. How many are opposed to the resolution? Aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that's two in favor, 22 opposed, and one excused. Right. Sorry for the confusion. Resolution GC3 by Legislator Holtz. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Alfred, this resolution urges adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution adopting County of Oswego Local Law Number 7 of 2022 entitled A Local Law Amending Local Law Number 3 of 2021 providing for the salaries of certain county elected county officers of the County of Oswego. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman and fellow legislators, <coughs> point 14, I witnessed elected raises taken out of the budget. 2015 budget, I saw elected raises taken out of the budget. Since that time, they have not been taken out. This passed today, and it gets passed tonight, that will be seven years in a row that this county legislature has voted themselves a raise. We got departments losing people. We got departments that, you know, operating shorthanded. They can't fill their positions. <coughs> You heard people speak on this today, how they're hurting, and we're going to vote ourselves raises. I, myself, cannot see why we would do this. At the last meeting, I asked to have this put into a public referendum to let the public vote on whether or not we get raises. Today, I'm going to make a motion that we take this, these raises, and put them to a public referendum to be voted on at the time of our elections on the back of the ballot it would say whether you want to give the legislature a raise or not give them a raise. And I think that that's the way we should move forward and I think that's the way it should be from now on. And I believe that we would have to change Local Law 3 to do that, correct? Or is it Local Law 7? Local Law 7 or 3? Which one is it? 7. 7. Right? I would say that we would have to change that and if a referendum is needed we have to do that. I think that's what we should do. We should not be deciding. We sit there in committees and we say, I have to abstain because what we're voting on is a company that I work for and I'm going to receive money. You know, I'll get benefits from, from you giving them money. But it's still, I know you can do it because the law says you can. You can vote yourself a raise. The federal government does it. The state government does it. Why not us? Well, because you can doesn't mean you should. So I'm saying let the people decide, not us. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Does he, does he have a second? He has a second. Thank roll you. call vote on that. Thank you. Um, roll call vote then, sir. <coughs> Michael Yarden. No. Herbert Yardin. No. Edward Gilson. No. David Holt. No. Roy Rehill. No. John Martino. No. Frank Bombardo. No. Paul House. No. James Litter. No. Mary Ellen Chestro. No. Linda Lockwood's been marked excused. Richard Klein. No. Patrick Twist. No. Stephen Walpole. No. Nathan Evans. No. James Scanlon. No. Laura Magano. No. Robert Wilmot. No. Marie Shad. Yes. Tim Stuff. No. Noel Samuelson. No. James Parasic. No. Michael Soloway. No. 
Mark Greco. No. Frank Castilla. Definitely yes. Mr. Chairman, that's two in favor, 22 opposed, and one excused. Thank you. Back to the original resolution then. <coughs> Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, two opposed, and one excused. Thank you. <coughs> Moving wow. on. Wow. Moving now to resolution GC4 by Legislator Holt. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution. Urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution fixing time and place for the 2023 organizational meeting. This will be held on January 5th, 2023, and the speaking on the news chambers. Thank you. Any discussion? Legislator Castillo. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make an amendment to this and move the time to 7 o'clock for the public in the pen, not at 2 o'clock. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Two eyes opposed. No. no. Thank you. Back Ms. to you. Oh, Mr. Chairman, it's two in favor, 22 opposed, one excused. Sorry. <coughs> Back to the original resolution then, fixing that time and place. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Mr. Chairman, it's 22 in favor, two opposed, and one excused. Thank you. You were going to say no. Res <laughs> resolution GC6 by Legislator Holt. GC5. No, I'm going to deny Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution <coughs> fixing time and place for a public hearing relative to establish a sustainable en energy loan program in the county of Oswego. I think this would be a, a, a county of Oswego on the one of 2023 to establish a sustainable energy loan program for the county of Oswego on the ninth day of February 23 at 2 p.m. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Moving to resolution GC7 by Legislator Holt. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution urgent adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, Office of Strategic Initiatives, American Rescue Plan Funds. <coughs> Thank you. Any discussion? Can you reread that? I, can't, I couldn't hear what he was saying. Me, uh, perhaps I could read it. Seven. Uh, it's a resolution authorizing budget modifications. Um, what basically this does is distribute the funds that is consistent with the intent of federal law. It talks again about those totals, which I think Legislator Holt had mentioned. The total of the transfer requested is $3 million. It's basically a bit of a, uh, of a uh, internal housekeeping. We've approved the project, and now we have to make sure the funds are in the proper spot. <coughs> Pay those bills. Okay. Is it clear? <coughs> clear enough? All right, thank you. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, one opposed, and one excused. Thank you. Moving to resolution GC8 by Legislator Holtz. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution, urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the commencement of certain litigation by the County of Oswego. It's a resolution of the municipal law 2017 against the individual to recover on behalf of the county medical and indemnity charges not otherwise covered by a court order uh, resolution <coughs> concerning this law. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excused. Thank you. Thank you, Vice <laughs> Moving now to Public Safety Committee, uh, resolution PS1 by Legislator Greco. 
Mr. Chairman, I want this resolution to recommend his adoption. Would the clerk please read the heading? Resolution accepting DCJS Specialized Female Offender Program grant and authorizing the creation of a temporary probation officer position. Yeah, this is a grant in the amount of $95,000 that covers the position, print benefits, and other expenses associated with the position. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 24 in favor, zero opposed, and one excuse. Thank you. Before we get to uh, resolution PS2, I'd like to take a moment to congratulate the CSI team and the entire legislature, both in a partisan and bipartisan effort. Um, I'd like to thank the law enforcement and the county officials who worked hard to put this plan together. Though we often object to unfunded state mandated exercises like this one, I believe our Community Safety Initiative Committee did an excellent job putting this plan together and we all appreciate <coughs> their efforts. Those efforts will result in an effective awareness campaign and better training and coordination among law enforcement agencies that will make our community safer. Having said that, and again, thank you, Legislator Greco, for your efforts on that, along with others. Resolution PS2 by Legislator Greco. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and urge it to adopt. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution adopting and approving a domestic terrorism plan for Oswego County. Yeah, I would also like to recognize former Legislator Brad Trudell, uh, who assisted greatly in the uh, advanced of this plan, along with the Sheriff's staff. Uh, and other members of the committee, uh, the city's uh, city police chief as well. And uh, this is as a result of the governor's executive order requirements to me. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, one of, oh, no, I'm sorry, 22 in favor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't try to throw me in there. <laughs> Um, it's 23 in favor, zero opposed. Chico had left the, um, or legislator Balco has left the building, so it was the chamber, so it's good. Excuse Yes, I would note, Sorry. again, thank you. I would note that legislator Walpole was called into work. Oh. Um, okay. Yes, thank you. Right, it is, if you can look out the window, it is starting to snow pretty good. Um, and legislator Walpole also works for the town scribe as a plow of property. So, anyways. Res resolution PS3 by Legislator Greco. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution and recommend its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification E911. <coughs> uh, this is uh, $20,000 for overtime. Uh, it's necessary because we are short staffed. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, this 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two. Thank you. Resolution PS4 by Legislator Greco. I offer this resolution and recommend it to die. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing replacement of 12 microwave radio links. Yeah, this is uh, authorization for the chairman to sign an agreement with this company. Uh, it's pretty much federally funded. It's in the budget. And if we sign it before the end of the year, we save $300,000. Sign it. That's your job. <laughs> wow. uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuses. Now I can sign. I can sign. Moving to Human Services Committee, HS1 by Legislator Rito. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to follow the motion and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution awarding professional services contract RFP 22 OFA 006 Nutritionist Services. This is uh, to provide uh, nutrition ser ser nutritionist services, uh, a contract of $62,375 for 39 weeks, 25 hours per week, at an hourly rate of $65. Um, this is provided through um, a Shine Nutrition Education Services grant, 100% reimbursed, no fiscal impact to the county, uh, and the ability to renew that two times. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23, 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuses. Thank you. Moving to resolution HS2 by Legislator Rita. Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, Department of Social Services, 
for on-call holiday premium? Uh, this is uh, $1,200 to get us through the end of the year. Um, apparently the amount was changed uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, I think believe by the state, and uh, so there was a little bit of a shortfall in that account. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Moving now to Economic Development and the Planning Committee, resolution, <laughs> legislator stop. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I bring forward this resolution. I encourage its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, Department of Community Development, Tourism and Planning, Public Transportation Funds. That's the uh, no expense to the county, $1.7 million for two years of transportation funding. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excused. Thank you. Resolution EP2 by <laughs> Legislator Stahl. Mr. Chairman, I bring forward this resolution. I urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, Department of Community Development, Tourism and Planning, Snowmobile Trail Grant. This is $261,000 in pass through money from New York State for 10 snowmobile clubs. No local share or cost to us. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excused. Thank you. Resolution EP3 by Legislator Spock. Mr. Chairman, I bring forward this resolution. I urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? <clears throat> resolution authorizing budget modification, Department of Community Development, Tourism and Planning, HUD infrastructure funds. Uh, so this is a congressional allocation, uh, exciting project, about $3 million. We all know some of the exciting news we've been hearing just south of us. Uh, the Village of Phoenix, Town of Scruple, and Oswego County are working uh, to uh, develop uh, wastewater treatment and conveyance projects. Uh, this is about $3 million towards that. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excused. Thank you. Resolution EP4 by Legislator Stahl. Mr. Chairman, I bring this resolution forward and I urge this adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution awarding professional services contract RFP 22 CBPT 010 Mobility Management Service. So the RFP that went out to provide our mobility management service. Uh, we have uh, one respondent here and uh, has reviewed and we are recommending it uh, to be uh, going forward. <coughs> Thank you. Any discussion? Correct. First off, uh, if you think back a couple, three years when we started talking about this type of projects to give people uh, the ability to move around the county uh, and to take hats off to Legislator Chesbro, if you've not attended a transportation committee meeting, uh, she has a very hard whip, Keep Central in line, several others. Uh, but we have made amazing steps, and, and I will tell you that working with a nonprofit, with people that do not have transportation, this is starting to change people's lives in this county. Uh, people are able to get out, they can spend money the way they want to spend it, they can go visit who they want to, worship where they want to, and it's, it's an amazing program that we've still got growth to do. And I am so pleased that this legislative body the last few years has taken this mission on and, and come to this point that it actually does make an impact in people's lives in this direction. And thank you, uh, Legislator Chesbro. Uh, I She's probably the one person I don't dare try to over-talk at those meetings. She will put me in my place real quick. She does have an outside voice. Yes, I do. <laughs> thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, it's 23 in favor, <coughs> zero opposed, and two excused. Thank you. Before we go to uh, Resolution EP5, I would like to uh, relay this to you, that the creation of this capital project has been a long time. <coughs> We're excited to soon offer county residents with another recreational opportunity and access to the beautiful stretch of the Oswego River that has been largely inaccessible. Our Great Lake Rivers and the lake and rivers are arguably our greatest assets and anything we can do to bring attention to that is a positive. When this work is completed, it will complement recent efforts to enhance the waterfront in the city of Oswego by creating a small boat launch and picnic area on the eastern shore 
of the Oswego River. And this has been a long time coming. Resolution EP5 by the Legislator Stock. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I bring forward the resolution and I urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution establishing capital project number 1222 Oswego River Access Project. You all heard what the chairman said? Yeah, well, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. <laughs> you took all the wind out of the sails on that one. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Legislator Castillo. I agree with you, Mr. Chairman and fellow legislators. This has been a long time coming. I can remember it back when I was first in here. And uh, I asked him, what, excuse me, I didn't ask in committee, but what is the local share on this? I can't, uh, according to the, uh, the documents that set up here, we are, like I said, we're setting, we're setting up a $260,000 project. The expect, expected local share is $63,861, and the grant aid is $196,139. <coughs> Uh, now, there is going to be some efforts to offset some of that with um, work that we can do in kind work, dating base kind of things. Uh, but at least as far as the original agreement it goes, that is the amount that they uh, state is funding towards this project. So that's, in effect, an anticipated not to exceed. Thank you. Right. Any okay. other discussion? No, I, I just okay. asked a question. I hadn't even finished it. Yeah. Any other discussion? Do I have to stand up each time? I don't think I do. No, if you're tired, if you're tired, tired. This again, okay, this. <laughs> The reason I was originally opposed to this is because you're taking prime riverfront property and putting in a boat launch. And yes, you're going to bring in tourism, but real property tax dollars is what funds every service that we offer to the public. And because we're taking it away again, still going to take it away. I still will not be in favor of this, as I wasn't in favor of it when it was originally brought forward. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Now I'm done. Any other discussion? Legislator Gilson. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is, uh, once I think the residents realize where this piece of property is, it's not a really a buildable lot, unless perhaps you wanted to do some homeless lean to on it or something like that. So I think it's the best use of the property. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 21 in favor, two opposed, and two excused. Thank you. When we move to resolution EP6, I know Legislator Stahl has worked very hard on this. I'm sure he has some comments regarding this. Well, would you put uh, EP6 by Legislator Stahl? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I bring forth this resolution. I urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution regarding the alternate allocation of pilot payments received by Oswego County Industrial Development Agency pursuant to General Municipal Law 85815. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is this is a um, a return to a resolution that we had had years ago. Uh, there was some discussion about you know. We're, why we, we pulled it years ago and uh, you know, why we bring it back. And part of the, the main reason why something like this makes sense is, is our industrial development agency is a board, it, it's, it's our economic development arm for this county. Uh, it's a board we appoint that we oversee and we fund them. And we fund them a number of ways, but, but potentially the funding is through, at least historically, uh, through this opportunity here. So the way it works is that uh, whenever there's a pilot awarded, the, the IDA collects that money and forwarded it on up until last year, 100% uh, of that to the county. Uh, under this agreement, they would keep 10% of that back. Now, that cannot be used for operating expenses. It cannot be used for payroll. What that has to be used for is very specific. It has to be used for economic development activities. And that money needs to be earmarked by the board, again, that we oversee, that we appoint in public meetings. Uh, that money has to be accounted for every single month. It is available publicly and to anyone who asks for it. Uh, but that's like the projects that allowed us uh, to purchase an incredible piece of property down by our industrial park recently. Uh, we purchased it before Micron, thankfully. We were proactive on that. And because of that, we were able to purchase property that today would probably be four or five times more expensive at a very fair rate. Uh, we as a county don't have the exact same tools that our industrial development agency. That's why it was set up that way by the state government. So what I would encourage is that this funding is necessary right now. I think we're at a time where uh, we need to fund investment. We've heard, and many of us here have complained for years, that we need more infrastructure. If we're going to grow, we need to be prepared. We need to be proactive. And right now we're seeing that the proactive work is paying off. 
Do I wish we had done more? Absolutely. And now is the time where we need to spend money in infrastructure in the type of thing that want, makes people want to live here. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people working within the stone throw of this county. Uh, we need to make sure that we can do everything we can to get them to live here. Uh, so that's my recommendation for this. This would be, on average, about 240000 historically uh, that they would withheld, that they will use, again, for economic development projects. Thank you. Thank you. And I would add that uh, a couple others, uh, uh, Mr. Turner and also Mr. Wheelock from the IDA met with County Executive McMahon from Onondaga County and some others there with State Economic Development on Tuesday. And one thing that they had stressed to us uh, is the ability to react quickly. And this would be the best <coughs> avenue we have for the ability to do that. So thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Castillo. Now you're standing? Yeah, because I don't want you to cut me off again. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, fellow legislators, I think there's maybe five years that were here back when I originally argued this point up in Alaska. At that meeting, they were looking for their 10%, they were looking to pass it. I checked at that time with every other county in the state of New York. And no other county gives any of their pilot repayment money back to the IDA. We are, we will be number one again in giving back our pilot repayment money. Now the IDA has been around for a long time. And in that length of time right now we're in the top five of the highest unemployment. We're in the top five in high poverty rate. We're in the bottom of our uh, health. If you take this, you've got 21 properties that we now, that the IDA and Operation Swing County own. Those properties do not pay taxes, any, any real property taxes. And they also don't pay any school taxes, town taxes. If you look at what they pay, they pay for the fire department, okay? But what I'm getting to here is that we have money that we're giving them now. Yes, everybody in the state gives a certain amount of their portion to pay the salary for their IDAs, and that's a given. That's okay, but they do not give the 10% back. Now, if you look at it, right now, we, because we do not collect county property tax from them, we give them $52,000 a year, plus the $400,000 we give them for their salary. Over the course of 10 years, that's what, $520,000? Over 20 years, it's over a million dollars. We, as a county, should not be giving back to an agency that everybody else does not give their money back to. Now, what they do, the other counties, the IDA, they collect their money from the people that are looking for the pilot agreements, not from the taxpayers. There are numerous people in this legislature that are upset with people being on public assistance. Well, right now, the IDA is on public assistance. It's time for us to take them off public assistance. It's time for us to do a little tough love and make them make their own money. It's time for us to cut the umbilical cord. We should not be voting in favor of this. 200 and what did you say, sir? I'm sorry? Uh, $225,000. $225, Taxpayer money. We just got through hearing people saying how they, you know, want to raise. And here's $225,000 we're going to get back to an agency that's put us fifth for unemployment in, in, the top, in the top five for also poverty. We are rewarding them, and we should not be rewarding them put them on their own. Every other IDA in the county and the state is doing that and they are flourishing. We're not. Please, 
don't vote in favor of this. Thank you. Legislator <coughs> Evans. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm just a little confused. So, pardon me. You've always had. Well, you have a word salad that you kind of put forward. And it's hard to dissect sometimes. So, <laughs> one hand, uh, no other county uh, does this. The other hand, another other county does this. And so, uh, Mr. Chairman, I mean, the reality is this. I mean, other counties give their IDAs lots, right? And so, whether we collect it all and then turn around and cut the IDA a check, or we just let them retain the 10%. Uh, I, I think we're just we're just kind of you know it's kind of confusing the issue here, right? So uh, we could clearly collect all 100% and turn around and cut them the check. And as maybe the fellow legislator puts it, you know, maybe we would be like every single other county, all right? But elect, but instead we've elected to let them hold the full 10%. I also think that it's kind of incredibly unfair to pin the entire poverty issue within our county on the back of the IDA. Um, I, I, I think there's a lot of other factors that kind of feed into that particular uh, situation. Um, I think our IDA is gearing up uh, quite a bit uh, for a lot of expansion to come. Uh, they're working very hard. There's a new executive director coming on into operation of Strico County as well, who I know uh, is fired up and ready to, to get things rolling. So, I would urge this legislature to uh, really dismiss the hyperbole that we just heard uh, related to the IDAs to blame for the poverty within this county and certainly support this uh, and ignore the word salad that we just heard. Thank you. Thank you. I guess I would add too, there's a bit of a mischaracterization that a pilot payment does not end up going to governments. A pilot payment is basically a structured tax payment which then gets distributed to the other municipalities and governments, just for clarity. Legislator Castillo. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I really wasn't going to bring this up now because <coughs> but the fact is the IDA, their big claim to fame is that they bring jobs in, they retain jobs. They're doing all this great numerous things for us to bring in salaries. If everything was so peachy keen, we wouldn't be in the top five in unemployment. We wouldn't be in the top five of poverty. Now I'm sorry that you know if uh, my colleague across the aisle has the you know feelings that uh, I, I'm attacking the IDA uh, improperly as a as a uh, employee of the CDA of Fulton. It, he really doesn't have much that he can you know contradict himself, he's, he's got to be in favor of it. What I'm saying is that the jobs, they never lose jobs. We had in Fulton, we have the Nestle site that was a big disaster that was brought on by the IDA. We had the Addis Company, we have Millers, but none of these jobs that left have ever taken off the list of how many jobs that they've retained and brought in. And I'm not saying that we should get away with the IDA, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about this 10%. That's taxpayer money that should go into this and stay in the taxpayer's bracket so that we can use it internally. Thank you very much. Legislator Evans. Yeah, I think uh, the legislator forgets who's really in charge of the state. And that's his party, not our party. And we rank, when we rank 50th in so many categories, including job retention, uh, people are flocking out of the state left and right. I think he only can point his finger to himself and the party that's in control of this particular state. It's not the IDA's fault. It is the taxation within this state that is, is to blame. It is the policies that are coming up out of Albany that gives us the economic situations that we're in. It is not, repeat, it is not our IDA. And so if he has a complaint, if he has a beef with this county, and how things are going, I think he should look himself in the face, look his party in the face, and tell his colleagues in Albany to do something different when it comes to the policies and procedures that they are putting forward. Thank you. Here, here, here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Legislator Stop. I, if I could just say, I, I can understand some of the concerns, and, and every time we talk about spending money on one thing, there's always the thought that that means we're not spending it on something else. But we as government are tasked with being able to do more than one thing at a time. Um, our budget, there's a lot of payroll in our budget, we know that. There's a lot of services in our budget. 
There's a lot, a lot of things. There's paving roads, right? Um, I would argue that we need, we can't give up on investment. Um, if, if we give up an investment now, then we are not going to be able to progress to the point where hopefully we have a, um, a population that can afford to, to help support this, right? To help support the needs that we have. Uh, I would encourage that now is the time to invest. And the IDA has a tool that we don't have. They have, they have the ability that we don't as government. That's why they were set up. And so to say that we, you know, either let them on their own, uh, their own, the board is unpaid. Uh, they have staff that they lease. Um, I think that we need to invest. It's our responsibility to invest. And I think that, you know, the funds that we have, this isn't our money. This is taxpayers' money. So everything we spend a dime on in this county is taxpayers' money. And so I want to make sure that I am giving the future of this county the best opportunity to succeed. And the best way to do that is to invest to make sure that we can do everything we can for the future. So that would be my response. Thank you, Legislator Gilson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I'm i glad Legislator um, Stahl cleared up some facts here on the salaries. But in addition, uh, the IDA works hard along with Operation Survey County to attract projects and bring uh, business in. And that's where these pilot accounts are established. Um, there's public hearings set up before we accept uh, pilot accounts, but uh, to to pull, draw some of the money off from these balance accounts for reinvestment is wise. It's money that otherwise we wouldn't even have if it wasn't for the IDA setting these up. So I think it's a, a good use of, of the, the funding and reinvesting in our economy. Thank you. Legislator Graff. Yeah, I'd just like to uh, talk a little bit more about what Ed and Kim are saying is that the pilot is so much greater than the tax assessed at the, at the time that they're getting. So the pilot's a greater source of income for the county and for the towns and for the school district. And it's not that they're taking money from us, it's basically a reward for their investment in this company coming in and setting up the pilot. Without it, we're getting nothing, right? We're getting very little. But the pilot comes in, we generate income for the county, for the towns, and for the schools. And without giving back a portion of that for them to reinvest, every economist knows that you have to be invested. If you don't invest, there's no return. I'll leave it at that. It's very Thank you. And I would add that that purchase, the latest purchase down at the <coughs> industrial park uh, through the IDA came from this type of program. So there is certainly value in that. Legislator Castillo. Uh, I same thing. So many different sides here that uh, I don't mind being the bull in the middle. The, I've never said anything bad that we should not have the IDA. I'm holding them accountable for not doing what they claim that they are doing. Okay? Now, the pilot agreement, we could, we could put our own pilot agreement together if we wanted to, but we don't. That's what IDAs do throughout the whole state, which is fine, I have no problem with that. It's a 10% going back. Now, that again, I, I'm going to keep on that, and I'm always going to be on that. But I, I just like to answer some contentions that uh, the majority leader said about the state. Look at the state. And I'm sorry, but the state gave the city of Oswego, I think it was $10 million, $10.5 million for uh, investment. And I think somewhere in there, there was some money that was given to a lot of different people. The city of Colton got $10 million. And I'm sorry, but they're in a Sweden county, so they're getting money from the state. And I believe it was the state and uh, federal government to work together to get Micron to come, which now we're claiming is going to trickle down into the Sweden county, which is going to help us, which I hope it does. I don't think we'll be, you know, I, I know I won't be alive when it's, when it's finished. But I know that, you know, there will be, you know, some trickle down. But that was all done, the state and federal working together. So I kind of say back, yeah, I don't mind looking myself in the face, in the mirror, and, and I have no problem with that. And do I always agree with the state and federal government? No, I never do. 90% of the time, I, I disagree with all of them, what they do. But right now, it's the 10% that we're talking about here, and I'm not in favor of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22, 21 in favor, 2 opposed, and 2 excused. Thank you.
Moving on to the Health Committee, Resolution HE1 by Legislator Correct. After two months of not doing anything, I got the list. Hey, you got a big list today. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do that, but I just want to let you know we have an amendment for HE1. Yeah. Yes, would the clerk please read the heading? Resolution to add New York State health care worker bonus funds to the budget for the Oswego County Health Department. So, the state of New York has consistently, through nonprofits, through governments, uh, singled out particular programs, particular positions, and said, wow, you guys did a great job. Uh, we want to give you a bonus. Uh, the thing that I want to make clear on this, this is not counting money. This is 100% state. Uh, it is their money that they're telling us. Here it is. This is how we want you to distribute it. Bottom line is, if we want to tell them no, we give it back to them, and there's even a potential that they can come back and fine us for that. So, it's, it's money that's there that needs to be spent. The uh, resolution speaks about the salary base level, level of $125,000. Um, the highest amount can be $1,500 for a 35-hour work week. And the worker bonus can be up to $3,000. Unfortunately, the lines in the budget are not correct. So we will have to amend that to include so it. So we need to amend it to put, make sure it's put in the way. And I trust all the legislators have those corrected lines. Yeah, true. Okay. Sure. So. It's, it's basically an edit. But um, so, the, so the resolution <coughs> we need to be amended, we have a. Uh, Motion for that? Motion to amend. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excused. <laughs> okay, back to the original resolution then by Legislator Kraft. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excused. Thank you. Resolution HE2 by Legislator Carrasco. On board. So this one is a reclassification of the typist position to a senior typist uh, as a result of moving people around and vacancies and uh, refilling. There is a need for one of these positions to match the work that they're going to be doing in our group. That's it. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excused. Thank you. Resolution HE3 by Legislative Press. Resolution authorizing Health Department to initiate closure procedures for the Pulaski Diagnostic and Treatment Center and, and surrender of license. This sounds a lot worse than it really is. This is a facility that we don't use. Uh, the state came through, did an audit, and said to us, you guys need to close that. Um, it's part of an audit process. Um, it was used previously at times for vaccines. That is now all being handled in different methodology and locations. And so this just clears up a piece of uh, tail bureaucracy that doesn't need to be there. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, it's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuses. Thank you. Resolution HE4 by Legislator Krasick. Would the clerk please read the heading? Resolution reappointing medical director for the Oswego County Health Department. So Christine, Christine Olipke uh, has been the, uh, the director of our health department. And she does an outstanding job. She's also the uh, director for the Board of Health. Uh, she's a great um, advocate for trying to see county health come up. I heard someone say today that we're going to 50, and they make that sound so negative. But this county, uh, the older legislators would remember, we were 62 out of 62 for probably five or six years in a row. So if we're up to 50, that's a major accomplishment. I don't know where the number is actually is at the moment, but it was nice that somebody thought we're that out. Uh, but we are making headway with some of the programs, 
And having a great medical director allows us to have conversations that are open, they're honest, and they give us opportunities to look at different avenues. Thank you. For clarity, this is Dr. Lucky. Um, a small part that we had. Any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to echo, thank you for bringing up that fact that we were about 62 in 2015. In seven short years, we've come up on that list by you know, 12 spots. I think that's pretty important. Let's just keep it going in the same direction. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Full. Mr. Chairman, that's going to be in favor. Zero goes in favor. <coughs> thank you. Resolution HE5 by Legislator Krasik. Would the clerk please read the head? Resolution awarding professional services contract RFP-22-HLTH-0030 hospice. So we had to make the decision a few months ago, unfortunately, to close the hospice program. Uh, at that time, we were one of only two counties in New York that was a county-run program, and we'll take it down to one county that still does that. Uh, that is outsourced. In doing that closure process uh, and talking to the state, we discovered that we can transfer that license and, and put that out for people to uh, you know, submit a proposal for taking it. Essentia Health was the only respondent to this, and they have offered the county $100,000 to purchase that license, and they will be uh, handling hospice in this county from border to border to border to border. Or lake to border and border to lake. Lake to lake. Lake to lake. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution HB6 by Legislator Krasik. Would the clerk please read the heading? Resolution <coughs> awarding professional services contract RFP-22-HLTH-004 electronic medical record. So our, our billing process and everything, if you remember right, uh, during COVID, uh, we had to allocate some extra money. We were looking for other employees that were capable of getting us caught up. Uh, we actually had fallen behind on billing to insurance companies. If you fall too far behind, they don't have to pay the bill. Uh, in working through this process, uh, it was discovered that there is an easier process, a different electronic medical record that would take care of part of that issue, most of that issue for us. Um, and with the money that we invest in this, we will see a return of, in the future, uh, we do not have to have as many billing clerks. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Paul. Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excused. You're very good, sir. Once again, this shot took my call. I don't seem to be in her blood. Jobs don't lie. <laughs> uh, moving now to Infrastructure, Facilities, and Technology Committee, Legislator Walpole, as I had mentioned, uh, had to go to work, so we're going to the Vice Chair, Legislator <coughs> with IT1. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the following resolution, I urge adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution Establishing Capital Project Number 1122 Earth Boiler Number 2 Steam Drum Repair. This is a very needed repair in order to keep operations moving um, at our earth power plant. It's going to be $500,000. Um, it's going to be taken out of the solid waste fund balance. Thank you. Any discussion? Um, question. I have a passion for infrastructure. Um, is this the boiler that had some tube work done on it recently? I believe, um, I believe Director Schmidt is in the back. They, they've all had some tube work done on them recently. Uh, this is this is not the the one. Um, it was not one boiler where tubes were taken out to, to get the dimensions for the screen for the urgent screen in the project. Have you considered a metal surgical company to evaluate the extent of damage to to determine if there's hairline cracks in other parts of the drum? I'm just 
I just want to save money if we can. No, no, fair enough. We, we have, um, in, in this boiler, after, you know, after we, we suffered the initial casualty, uh, we brought in some help to clean it. Uh, we have, uh, I'm going to use the brand name, Mag Magniflux, that uh, it's basically a, a, a magnetic dye uh, to check for cracks. They did discover some more cracks in the initial through the crack. Um, that's going to be incorporated in this repair. Um, Are any tubes involved in this? Yeah, approximately 70 tubes being involved in this, this pack, the flush pack that we're currently contemplating. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's one thing in favor. No opposed and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT2 by Legislator Twist. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer the following resolution and urge adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution increasing authorization <coughs> of capital project number C0322-B and G roof replacement. Yeah, so this is increasing the project $400,000 to replace the roof, so the total authorization is going to be $450,000 so that the roof isn't leaking on everybody. So. Thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT3 by Legislator Twig. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer the following resolution. There is a Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing expenditure from capital reserve number 21 building renovation. Yeah, so this is going to be renovating the DSS uh, bathrooms. Total authorization for $120,000. Thank you. Any discussion? Absolutely correct. With my other hat, I just want to make note that uh, hopefully they are making them uh, disability capable. I believe it's mandated to do so. I believe they are mandated, and I, believe, and I know they are aware. So I'm sorry. I'm just going it out there. Understood. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT4 by Legislator Twist. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I offer the following resolution. Urges adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, central services, IT expenses. Yeah, so this is transferring money within your own IT budget, um, taking last minute adjustments at uh, the end of the year, stuff that we do every year. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution IT5 by Legislator Twist. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer the following resolution and urge the adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the execution of two easements on certain terms to the village. <coughs> yeah, this is just uh, the property that uh, the county owns across from DSS. It's just allowing uh, water work to be done um, on that property. <coughs> Yes, thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, it's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Moving now to finance and personnel, uh, resolution FP1 by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this resolution under adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution reestablishing pre qualified lists of certain professional service firms. Yes, our. our uh, um, purchasing department solicited uh, uh, pre-qualified requirements to do professional services throughout uh, the county and uh, neighboring areas. They have a qualified <coughs> list. We all have it. And this is done yearly as I'm speaking. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution FP2 will be at 7 o'clock. Resolution FP3 by Legislator Martinez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have this resolution and urge adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing budget modification, district attorney's office, other fees and services, and medical fees. These are these are some fees and um, stuff that have been. Oh, no, no. This is for uh, the medical fees that we have to. 
put in four because they ran short on money in that account money. Right. Okay. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed. Thank you. Resolution FP4 by Legislator Martini. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have this resolution entered to that. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution increasing existing appropriations for various funds in several offices and departments. This was described as uh, some cleanup of accounts that were still open that the money seemed to be transferred into the funds take care of those, close them out year end the business of 2022, so when they start in 23, they'll be clean and fresh. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Legislator Remy. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion and waive the rules of the legislature for the consideration of GC9. PS6, HS3, EP7, and FP7 only. Second. Thank you. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, it's going to be in favor. Zero. Please <coughs> Thank you. Moving to GC9 by Legislator Holtz. Mr. Chairman, I'll open the resolution. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution establishing the 2022 county equalization rates for towns and cities within a new county. We have a list of all the uh, towns and cities within that county. So we have the equalization rate for this one. Thank you. For the self explanatory. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero. Opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution PS6 by Legislator Drecker. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution to recommend its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the chairman of the Assembly County Legislature to enter into an agreement with New York State for the 2023 staff EWI program. This is just a resolution for you to sign off on and approve this next year's EWI uh, program. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 23 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution HS3. Right. Legislator Grant. Maybe, no, maybe uh, Legislator Yearden would like to. Oh, that's this. Not 18. Sir, <laughs> <laughs> you, you got it in front of you? Take a swing at this one, Mr. Legislator Yearden? Well, I'll just subscribe. Well, how about first. this off as a resolution first? <laughs> <laughs> I offer a resolution. Uh, Clerk, please read the heading. Resolution establishing capital project number <coughs> 22-Camp Survey, ADA, Bathhouse, and Capital Improvement. Well, Camp Survey, uh, we acquired quite a few years ago. I think it was around 1988. And uh, at that time, the legislature uh, up in that area was uh, William H. Britton. And uh, I want to read, he got a picture of him up there at the community center in Williamstown. The first time I went to the town board meeting, I saw his picture. I went up and I read uh, what they had to say about him. And it says, uh, William H. Britton. 10, 30, 43, to 4, 1793. William H. Britton, one of 10 children, children and, uh, and the son of William and Julia Oyer Britton. He graduated from Altmire Pierce William Tunnel High School in 1962 and was a 30 year member and employee of the Operating Engineers of Syracuse. He was married to Ann Homler in uh, November 4th, 1966, uh, in Tabor, New York. He was the father of three children, children, son William and daughter Laura and Lisa. As a lifelong resident of Williamstown, Will was an active community member. He was a life member of the Williamstown Voluntary Fire Department. He was a seventh degree Mason with the Amboy Lodge 
and he's a founding member of the William Historical Society and, a town, and, and town councilman for four years. And he was a Swedish County legislator for the town of Williamstown until his untimely death. He also was an avid runner and, and ran marathons in Ottawa and New York City. His dedication to the better of Williamstown and his humor made him a very popular legislator with a great foresight of the future. He was the instrumental in the county acquisition of Camp Zerbe. He was an organizer of the 150-year case celebration in 1991. He was committed to having a head start program in Williamstown and was a driving force behind a grant for the community center, which the town board is now in. William H. Britton was he truly a man of the people. And the reason I read that, because his desire was to dissolve Camp Zerbe. And for many years, it kind of went on this. Nothing was really done. And recently, they put in new septics, and they put in new wells. And with this grant, we will be able to rebuild them. The buildings, they're in deplorable shape, and uh, put a brand new bathroom in near the lodge. They have weddings there every weekend, and there's no bathroom there. So with these items, <coughs> Camp Serbi will be rebirthed, I would say. And the people on the eastern side of the county will have a spot similar to Camp Hollis, but not that exaggerate. But we got to start someplace. And with this money here, we can start rebuilding Camp Derby, and it'll be good for the Williamstown, Albion, and Paris, Redfield, Boylston, Sandy Creek, Mexico, West Monroe, Cassandra, the whole eastern side of that county will benefit from this. And I urge you very much to pass this to get Camp Derby back up to our 20th century. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I would add it is my belief that that property is an untapped gem in Oswego County. It's located between Altmar and Williamstown. It's a former Syracuse Boys Club facility that has immense potential as a recreational area for children, families, and outdoor enthusiasts. We revamped the main lodge in recent years, but much more can be done to improve this property and make it a destination in our county. This project will kickstart the improvements with the construction of an ADA accessible bathhouse. Jim, you're clapping okay. I saw that. <laughs> and the expansion of the existing trail system and the creation of overnight lodging. So having said that, Legislator Reynolds. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to thank Legislator uh, Gurdon for his persistence uh, with this project. I think uh, the first words out of his mouth when he came to the legislature were, uh, what about Derby? <laughs> um, and he has been on this from the very start. Uh, and I'm glad to see uh, this come to, to uh, fruition. Thank you again for your persistence with us. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, over you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think we should also note that Assembly uh, Minority Leader Ms. Uh, Barkley uh, has made a $50,000 grant available towards the ADA Accessible Bathhouse. Very good. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and two excuse. Thank you. Resolution E37 <coughs> by Legislator Stahl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I bring this resolution forward and I urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution establish, establishing capital project number 1322 Legends Field Repair and Upgrades. All right, uh, thank you. Um, I'm very excited about this project. Um, the you know, the county has owned those ball fields for 20 years, and we've invested zero dollars into it. And over the last couple of years, the company's come in, and they've, they've really um, transformed it along a partnership with the, the city. And I, I just, I'm, I'm so excited to, to see us investing. That's what we talked about with Seattle, Missouri. We've talked about some of the areas as well. Um, just to give, I, I don't think, I, and I did make this available to everyone, and it'll be, it'll be available, but the, we had 8,600 people there in 2022, and I don't think people realize just what that means. 8,600 people came to the studio to play baseball, watch their kids play baseball, play softball, uh, ate in our restaurants, stayed in our hotels two to three nights. Um, and I'm just really excited because the, the estimated effect between the, the gas and the restaurants and the hotels of those people over 15 weeks of tournaments 
is almost $1.9 million. If that place was closed tomorrow, that's the type of money we'd be losing. So just wanted to, to start with that. That's where we stand right now. Um, with the investment that we're looking to do here, uh, but again, the first dollar we've spent as a county in, in decades uh, for property that we own. Um, if we were to invest what I'm looking at like doing here, conservative estimates would see that doubling, almost $3.9 million in the first year after that. The investment we're going to put in should pay itself back within the first year. More aggressive estimates are, are far exceeding that, but kind of a conservative person. So what I would encourage, and I, again, I, all this information is available. Anyone who's interested, I'd love to show it. But the most important piece that I want to mention, too, is that you know, there's always this idea that, well, that, that field is in the city, right? We, we want, we're, we're at the county here, but we own that property. We do owe it to keep that um, in, a, in a way where we're proud of it, right? I mean, many of you have been to that parking lot. It's potentially hazardous, right? We, we need to invest in the things that we own. And specifically, many of you know what the bed tax, right? The bed tax is money that we as a county earn off of people who stay in our hotels. They come from outside the county, it's a tax, it is, but it goes towards directly uh, uh, investing in tourism in, in, our, in our county. And just to give you an idea of change over the last three years that they've been doing this, we were about $520,000 a year that we, we budgeted for bed tax revenue. Again, that's money we directly invest in tourism and in uh, promoting this county outside of this county. This year, we are going to be budgeting $710,000. That's almost a what 40% increase over the last three years. So again, I think this is going to pay itself out very quickly. I love to see us investing. I think this is the type of thing that we need to do to show people who are going to be coming to work 20 minutes south of us that it's worth living here. So thank you. I would agree. Any discussion? Um, I hope that this would include a lacrosse box for tournaments and use as well. And there is a, a large number of people involved in lacrosse. It's been brought to my attention in two years as well, Kim. And I just feel it's certainly important to include. And that's a great point, Mike, to respond. Thank you, Legislator Shot. The, this, this investment sounds like it's just going to baseball and softball, but I want everyone to know that, that this is a huge untapped resource as we've talked about. There's a lot of acreage out there. Um, the hope would be that, and, and, and I would encourage everyone to stay in contact with this. This is, again, this is, this is the county's property, but it's something we offer to the county residents. And it shouldn't just be baseball players. It shouldn't just be softball players. In fact, there's discussion with some of the local school districts to, to offer a shared service to allow them to use it when they have overflow, when they have need. Uh, we've talked about working with some of the local little leagues. Um, the idea of having maybe a county-wide tournament, almost like a tournament of champions with our um, softball and baseball teams. Um, there's also the opportunity to potentially down the road, you know, if this explodes the way the projections seem to make it look, there's a lot more opportunity there. You know, maybe we could have box lacrosse there. I think that makes a lot of sense. Soccer is growing at an incredible rate. Um, turfed fields would allow for uh, two to three months of additional time usage. I mean, when you live down south, you play year-round. Swigo, we don't have that opportunity. But these turf fields, if we do these investments, would allow for uh, maybe two to three additional months for our kids out there. Um, and I really think the investment makes sense. Thank you. All right. Uh, Legislator Rose. Well, I just want to add on to what Legislator Stoll is saying. I mean, we have, uh, at that complex, really climbing in the rough. Uh, the, the, the tournament that's been going on, quite frankly, in spite of our upkeep uh, of that facility, and it is a rare. I mean, rare facility uh, within the state to have that type of facility here, right here in Oswego. I know uh, our county and other municipalities have considered doing something like this, but we have it uh, already. <coughs> and the, the amount of people that come here, I mean, folks have to go to uh, hotels in uh, Syracuse, Watertown, and other places uh, when they come here as well. And just to imagine for a moment, Legislative Cecilia mentioned this. Yeah, I do work for the Fulton CDA. And as soon as this was announced, I got a phone call saying, hey, maybe we need another hotel in Fulton. I hear you investing money in your ball fields. This is the type of investment that can kind of spur out of this type of investment uh, that, that the county is proposing and doing. And so I definitely urge us to pass this. This is going to yield. yield uh, an economic engine for us that will far exceed uh, the allocation that we are considering here today. Thank you.
Thank you. And I would ask, um, would this be appropriate? I know that in Washington they have a congressional baseball game between the Republicans and the Democrats. I would be in favor of uh, <laughs> Any other serious discussion? Democrats? <laughs> All right, much later, Ms. Gilbert. <coughs> I'm uh, sorry. You know, I, mean, I, I hear everything everybody's saying. They, they've said it since the get-go. Uh, <laughs> I was not in favor of this three years ago when it was first brought forward when uh, Legends Field wanted us to partner with them and the City of Oswego for a grant money to upgrade their field. Or I was against it then, and uh, they didn't get the grant. From what I understand, uh, I may be wrong, but I thought that I was informed by Mr. Turner the grant didn't go through. At that time, I said, well, the two people that have got uh, dogs in the fight should be paying the money, not the county taxpayers. Uh, the money that you're speaking of, legislative shop, stall, is that the total for the year, the bed tax, is that the total? Uh, Revenue for traveling tourism for the year, or is that just for when they run their baseball tournaments? Uh, well, the question that you ask is based on the number. I think you're not asking the bed tax, you're asking the total economic. Well, you, you, so, said, you, you said that you, you, know, you had uh, the bed tax uh, money that you're allocating that we're going to receive has is, is gone up at 40%. I think you said it was an increase. Is that the bed tax for the whole county, or is that just the bed tax for when in the whole year, or is that the bed tax for when there's baseball games going on at that location? That's the question. It's the annual total amount of bed tax. Right. So, 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 so the amount that they bring in is it, 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 not minimal, and I'm not saying that, okay? But what I'm saying is it, it, to the person that's listening say, oh, geez, well, they're bringing in all this money. Well, they're not. My point again, is the fact that we leased that field to the city of Oswego for a dollar. And when you lease a building to somebody, if they're going to do improvements on it, it's the people that are leasing it do the improvements. You, you know, may advertise that you'll do the improvements if they lease it, but you've got to add it to their cost, okay? Champions, how much does Champions give back to the city of Oswego over for their tournaments that they have. How much money do they receive from the champions for that? <coughs> do we know that? Uh, my understanding is they don't receive that. So, so City of Swingle gets no money from champions running their, their tournaments there. So why is it that we wouldn't take it over and say, okay, look, champions, we'll get to do the improvements on it, but we want a cut of whatever you're going to make off it because they're making money off it and they're paying their their uh, higher ups a salary, and we're looking at $2 million that we're going to put in there. And yes, we're going to get money back, but is it just from them or is it from everybody? I mean, you know, we have a lot of things that go on. We have Harbor Fest, we have uh, tournaments going on for the, in the lake. So there's a lot of things that happen in the Surreal County. It's not champions that's bringing everything in. And the way you made it sound to somebody that's not listening, oh, geez, they bring in a lot of money. Well, Let's take the field back from the city of Oswego. If all these improvements that you're talking about doing with, with the lacrosse fields and with the soccer fields, then yeah, let's take it back and start getting some money back of what our investment's going to be instead of sitting here saying, well, okay, we're getting this, but I don't say no to the, you know, to the improvements, stuff like that, but I say no to it going to a private thing that we're not going to get feedback from what they're getting out of it. We're getting money from everybody else. We're getting you know, lots of money. We're getting lots of revenue from what's coming in for Harvard Press. We're getting lots of money because that's where all of our, before champions took it over, we weren't getting you know, that. We were getting, you know, and you talk about three years ago. Well, three years ago, we were, you know, we were starting the pandemic, so you can't look at those figures, and the money's going to be greater this year because everybody's traveling now. Okay. So I, I will not be in favor of this because the two million dollars could go to someplace else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's play around. I mean, I just think it is just 
point out a couple of things. Yes, we are, we actually own the volume. Um, the, the revenue the, the county collects uh, via um, sales tax <coughs> is absolutely significant and will be even more significant uh, related to uh, the improvements uh, to the ball fields. And so I'm not quite understanding how the county does not benefit uh, from this improvement, how the county does not actually get revenue back in uh, when the economic um, portion of this goes up. But, I mean, it's just, it's just simple math, folks. People spend more money, we collect more money in taxes. Now, maybe people can disagree that that's the way the world should work here. Uh, but that's the reality. People are spending money. Um, and so we are collecting that, those funds back. It goes right back on, and, and people are um, benefiting from it. The local shops, the restaurants, the hotels, uh, all those sorts of things are, are benefiting. And I actually uh, believe, as I mentioned before, I think there will be more benefit uh, as a result of investments like these with business which want to open up. I mean, this is, <clears throat> these baseball tournaments and softball tournaments are huge. Absolutely huge. Um, you know, not even just in this area, but across the country. It, 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 the traveling that takes place uh, by these parents, I actually have to admit that I'm glad my kids are in. Uh, because I think my, my American Express card would probably be outrageous at this point in terms of payment. Uh, there is a lot of money spent. This will yield a lot more uh, funds coming out of the end. And uh, I just think it's simple math when you kind of break it all down. Two million dollar investment yielding, you know, almost that amount back in the first year. Uh, that seems like a win-win uh, for us and for our county residents. So thank you. Thank you. Let's play shot. I, I, I do think there's a lack of clarity. The business taking over the field needs skin in the game. They need to pay us a portion of the gate or a decent rental fee in order, I mean, otherwise every business would love, sure, we'll, we'll generate sales tax, but everybody's got skin in the game in business. So I think I'm, I'm for cautiously optimistic going forward, but they have to pay something to us. And that's a very important piece of the contract. And how it's insured, and how the liability is set up. So, yes, it's great, bad tax, all that. But I do believe whoever takes the facility and runs it cannot do it for next to nothing or in kind service. We have to have a set fee for a piece of the gate. So I've toured the facility, and there has been improvements by legends and others, which would remain ours because it's our assets, capital assets. Well, that could have acted as, as rent for them. Well, in effect, it, it's, I guess you could claim that it has. So but it's a muddy it's a muddy water to do it that way. Yeah, but any improvement, we remain the owners of. Understood. So we'll, we're... But going forward, I think we need a clear fee structure. Just from a good business standpoint. Any other discussion? Legislator Craig. I just have a question because this is actually just establishing the capital project. This isn't about uh, appropriating the money to be spent yet. That's a good point. Legislator Steele. Uh, on a business end, when you're looking to invest, you want to see what your investment, when your investment is going to pay back to you. Uh, my colleague across the hall, across the aisle here, said that. We're going to get that back, you know, rather quickly because we're going to be getting 1.7 million dollars in you know, <coughs> tourism revenue. But I would like to see what the revenue is that we receive during the time that they have tournaments, and how much you know revenue we bring in then, because that's going to tell us is it going to be. 20 years before we get, you know, our total two million dollar investment back, or is it going to be a year? Well, you know, again, I think legislators saw it <coughs> even on the conservative side, we believe we're going to pay our investment back uh, within the first year. Wow. Now, having said that, I can tell you that during tournament time, driving by there, 
and, and being from the southern end of the county, every hotel on Route 31 is full and every hotel in the city of Oswego is full. And to Legislator Emmons' point, if there is an inquiry for a new hotel in uh, Fulton that's based, or at least in part, on this operation, that's a win for us all. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank Mr. You. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, one opposed, and two excused. <coughs> Thank you. Legislator Emmons. We're on that B7, sir. Missed. Sorry. <laughs> SB 7 by Legislator Marcini. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this resolution in urgent adoption. I got to talk speed. Um, would the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing the reallocation of positions in the Department of Social Services. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe that this is a step in the right direction to address some of the concerns that we've heard today. Um, I truly think that. This is a show of good faith on the legislature's part and uh, with the uh, hope of renegotiation, reopening, we can we can get uh, we can get everybody to where they need to be. True, and, and this is the statement that I had read earlier, um, but we have reached out uh, to the bargaining groups uh, nearly a year ahead of schedule. We recognize the need to adjust worker compensation uh, and, and those things and to address recruitment and retention challenges. And we're optimistic that we can reach a settlement agreement to both sides. Any other discussion? Legislator Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just I wanted to thank, uh, thank you and um, all of the legislature um, for bringing this important resolution forward. Um, it's also extremely important to note that uh, the extraordinary step that we're taking to reopen uh, negotiations with the rest of the CSEA regarding compensation, which is something we did not have to do in the midst of an existing contract. Um, clearly, we have a fiduciary responsibility to all of our taxpaying constituents, um, but we also have a huge responsibility uh, to our employees, uh, especially those of you who take care of the most vulnerable among us. Um, and I just wanted to thank you all um, who spoke up today. I want to thank you for the hard uh, work that you do and uh, let you know that it does, it is not uh, unappreciated and that uh, we'll do the best we can in these upcoming negotiations. Thank you very much. I, I myself again, I more of what I'm just right. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to add that by virtue of uh, doing this reallocation, if I understand uh, the data correctly, uh, this will raise uh, these three positions uh, from being uh, fourth in terms of pay in relation to a comparison group of five other counties to second, uh, only behind uh, Onondaga County in terms of, of, of actual pay. Uh, which is, I think, a clear effort by this legislature to recognize the importance of these positions. And not only in retention of these positions, but certainly the recruitment of these uh, positions as well. Uh, that we need, uh, uh, we need to put our best forward, uh, put forward uh, related to our, our, our CPS workers. Uh, it's incredibly important. Obviously, we've had uh, uh, some situations this past year that have been uh, really rough uh, for the families uh, that have been involved. And I think it's eliminated the need uh, that we put forward uh, the monetary uh, amounts necessary to continue to recruit and improve, recruit at a high level uh, for these positions. I'd like to echo uh, the chairman's point uh, that um, it was the majority within this body uh, that today authorized uh, the reaching out uh, to the union uh, to uh, establish uh, a reopening of the uh, of the uh, agreement that we have with them uh, for early uh, 2023 in regards to uh, salary. And I think that is a direct reflection of our understanding and our concern over the, uh, the wages uh, of all that were within the CSCA. Uh, and so we, we look forward uh, as a body to those conversations. We do that in good faith. Uh, and, uh, and I appreciate the chairman's leadership for this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Mr. Chairman, that's why you in favor zero opposed and two excused. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to go into recess until 7 p.m. Thank you, Mr. Multiple seconds. We're in recess. Good evening. Welcome to the Studio County Legislature. Uh, this is our extension of our recess meeting from the 2 o'clock session. Um, we will convene in a, in a few moments, but right now we have a public hearing relative to the tentative county budget for the year 2023. Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Notice of public hearing. Please take notice that the public hearing will be held at 7 o'clock p.m. on the 15th day of December 2022 in the Legislative Chamber's fourth floor, Sweden County Office Building, 46 East Bridge Street, Sweden, New York, at which time all persons desiring to express their view may be heard in the matter of consideration of the tentative county budget uh, for the County of Oswego for fiscal year 2023. The maximum salaries to be paid pursuant to county law, section 359 for county legislator 2023, 15,170 each, chair 33,371, Majority Minority Leader 18,202 by order of the Sweden County Legislature, November 10, 2022, to Betsy Sherman Saunders, Clerk. Any persons wishing to be heard on the matter of consideration of the tentative county budget for fiscal year 2023, please step forward and state your name. Thank you. Uh, before I call these uh, people forward, I see some new faces in the crowd that weren't here at the earlier session. So there may have been some developments that you might not know of. Earlier today, which would have been our uh, resolution FP7, and I'm going to read this in its entirety. A resolution authorizing the reallocation of positions in the Department of Social Services. <coughs> this was by uh, Legislator John Martino, Chairman of Finance and Personnel. Whereas, the county has identified a critical need to modify the grade of specific positions located at the Department of Social Services due to severe retention and recruitment issues that not only jeopardize public safety, but the safety of at-risk children and adults. Whereas, due to a staff shortage, 55.1% <coughs> of CPS investigations are overdue beyond the 60-day threshold. 21.4% are over six months old, and 1.3% are over a year old, lending to an average caseload of 26.8, while 15 is the recommended amount as of November. And whereas the current vacancy percentage for caseworkers is 37.4%, senior caseworkers is 18.2%, and the case supervisor B is 11.1%. Now, therefore, upon recommendation of the Finance and Personnel Committee of this body, be it resolved that grade 11 caseworker, grade 11 caseworker Spanish speaking, grade 12 senior caseworker, and grade 13 case supervisor B in the County of Oswego Personnel Bargaining Unit be reallocated to grade 12 caseworker, grade 12 caseworker Spanish speaking, grade 13 senior caseworker, and grade 14 case supervisor B in the same Oswego County of, of Oswego Office Personnel Bargaining Unit and be it further resolved, this reallocation shall take first January 1st, 2023, and a certified copy of this resolution delivered to the county treasurer, the budget officer, <coughs> and the human resource director shall have the authority to make changes. Along for information, along with this resolution, uh, we have reached out to the bargaining units basically a year ahead of time and they have agreed to open negotiations ahead of time for the rest of the people not covered by this document. Having said that, this is a public hearing relative to the county budget. Will Jessica Steele come forward? <coughs> It's on. I checked her. Here. Okay. You have five minutes, please. Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jessica Steele. I'm a social welfare examiner. I'm not one of the people included in that. Um, I work at the Oswego County Department of Social Services. There are 60 people that that applies to, and there's 540 people that are in dire need. At the meeting today, uh, many people mentioned that the county has saved over seven million dollars of vacancies this year. This is up from this is up 48% from 2021. 
In the budget, you have the American Rescue Plan money being spent on baseball fields, gift shops, um, restaurants, and bars in, instead of us, the essential workers. Meanwhile, we're overpaid, <laughs> we're overworked, underpaid, and hemorrhaging workers. People come here to get trained and head to other positions. Equal positions in neighboring counties make up to $20,000 more a year doing what I do. Same with my coworkers. All of us in our unit deserve this and need this. I mentioned in my speech earlier, I took the time to email all of you and I got four responses, which was extremely disheartening. I want you to see that I'm wearing all black this evening. The reason I am is because I'm mourning. I'm mourning the fact that our local does, government does not seem to care about their workers enough to give us a fair wage. When ironically, just a few short hours ago, they certainly gave themselves one. I'm mourning the fact that you don't care about the public, <coughs> public health and safety of this county. You were told earlier about 911 calls going unanswered. What if that person didn't get another chance to make another nine links? So I beg of all, of all, excuse me, I'm sorry. I beg of all of you, before you pass this budget, to go back, sharpen your pencils, figure out a remedy for now. It needs immediate attention. Your workers and your community critically need this. Please remember, actions always speak louder than words. You could get a COVID bonus before Christmas if you wanted. You've already given them out to department heads that weren't forward-facing employees. So I don't see why we can't have that as well. It's critical, <coughs> immediate action needs to be taken. And once again, uh, Mr. Chairman, you said in your video, if it was a question of money, you'd give us more money, but you can't even get people to apply. They're not applying because there's no money. If you build it, they will come from a famous movie. If you give it to us, you'll get the workers. That being said, um, I want to thank all of you for your time and your attention to this matter. I wish all of you happy holidays and a safe and healthy new year. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Brenda Stansky. Luda Stansky, sir. Luda Stansky. I, I think I came closer the first time. <laughs> Thank you. It's okay. Sorry. Okay, hey, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brenda Ludostansky. Um, I stand before you as a grade B supervisor in family services. While I would like to thank you for addressing the caseworker situation, I'm also saddened that so many are not seeing increases at this time, and especially that none of us in the CSEA co-op unit who worked through the pandemic will be receiving the COVID money that you have granted the managers and yourselves. I feel that especially in light of the fact that the treasurer was just given a raise and yet today many incurred overdraft charges when paychecks did not go out on time, I implore you to please pass the same COVID payments that you are receiving for all of the members of, that work for the county. Everybody should be getting that money. After all, wasn't that the first and main intent when those monies were being appropriated by the federal government? Many surrounding counties at the time when the payments first came out gave their entire workforce percentage of increase. And it varied from county to county. But they, I know Onondaga County, they got the money across the board, a 1% increase. Some of the school districts did the same thing. Not negotiated contract things, nothing. They just gave them the money because it was given to them by the federal government with the understanding that it would be going to the people who were actually doing the work during that horrible time. You made a start earlier. Now, I implore you to embrace this opportunity to do the right thing and grant the $1,500 COVID payment to all who worked through the pandemic. And regarding the money saved issue, that is a very misleading statement because when it's reimbursable positions that are left unfilled, you're actually costing the community money because if you don't pay those dollars out, you don't get any reimbursement back. So for example, if a position is 80% reimbursable, then for a dollar in salary that's paid out, the state and feds put in eight, 80 cents. 
So the county pays 20 cents. You're saving 20, not a dollar. Okay, so 20 cents is not a dollar. So it's a fraction of that 7 million to start with. But the bigger issue is the difference between the fraction that is actually local share and the money that would be paid in wages is not being spent in the community. So it's not supporting our small businesses. And it's not being turned over. And it's not helping our county. Please, please do the right thing and give everybody the COVID payment. Thank you so much for your time. <coughs> Thank you. Shauna Reddick, come forward. Thank you. You have five minutes for comments related to the budget. As I said earlier, you know how I feel about some of the CPS workers, but, and I see the bigger picture when it comes to them being paid more. And hearing their stories today of how they're having trouble taking care of their own families, their own children, I know how it feels to be messed over right now being able to take care of ours. You're not just hurting them, you're hurting their children. You're making their children suffer. And like I had said before several times, that when they are not paid enough, they're not going to have enough staff and they're not going to be able to do the job right because not all caseworkers are bad. There are some who truly want to help and want to do the right thing and help the children that are suffering and they're not going to be able to do a good job if they're not getting paid enough and they're leaving to go to Onondaga or Watertown or wherever else. Despite my differences between them, I really want you guys to help them and do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, again, Bob, before we get started with a regular to reconvene, I guess, well, I guess at this point we will uh, reconvene the meeting from the earlier session. Um, again, I'd like to state, um, in case we weren't clear, that the caseworker situation that I just read to you that starts January 1st, and we are open for dialogue with the rest of the units. Um, we have committed to the first quarter of next year, so that will be an ongoing thing. So having said that, I do have a couple little things uh, I'd like to show you before we get to Resolution 1. Oh, we do, we do need a motion to come out of recess. I'll make a motion to come out of second. recess. Yeah, second. Thank you. Go in favor. I'm in favor. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Here, thank you. Um, a little bit regarding the budget. It's a very, uh, very uh, ongoing process. It takes quite a long time. It takes a year. We're doing the best we can for our workers, as we have just stated. Um, we feel very deeply and care very deeply about that. But I guess I'd like to show everyone, if we could, a little bit of where we are. This particular slide with the graphs, and it's not important what those actual numbers are, but they are. Right now, we're projected for 2023 to have a generic tax rate of $6.19. That's down from $6.95 last year. But our levy remains the same, and that is our commitment to the residents and the taxpayers of Oswego County. Now, the top red line is... Uh, the, the tax levy that would be adjusted by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics with the Consumer Price Index, <coughs> if we took today's dollars and went backwards, it would have been $14.80 back in 2004. So I think in a bipartisan manner, we may differ about some things with my, with my fellow legislators, but we all, I believe, have a commitment to deliver the best we can at the cheapest rate that we can. So having said that, if we go to the next screen, what this chart is going to show, this is our tax levy, the blue bars. This is how it's, it has uh, grown slightly, but yet if you take uh, adjusted with the red line back to the original dollars with the consumer price index, you'll see that we are below that in all cases. But what's telling is this yellow line, if you were to take our 2023 budget, 
and convert that into 2003 budgets, you'll see we're actually below where we were 20 years ago. It's been a struggle, but it's been a struggle, I believe, for the entire legislature, and we continue to make improvements in that regard. So, Mr. Ritz. <coughs> Now this graph here, you're going to see a lot of people talk about this magical $100,000 house that who knows lives in. This is my own house. I didn't want to show anybody else's for an example. The blue line represents uh, the taxes, the county tax, or the red line is actually the county tax as it's gone along. The blue line is adjusted for the consumer price index showing where we are. What this indicates here, contrary to what you'll hear, my assessment was raised $25,000 in 2020. But yet my taxes, my county taxes, have gone down in that period. And that's, I think, important to know. And I think Legislator Karasik has a brief statement about assessments. So I became privy to an online article and went in and read it and was quite shocked that someone thought it was important to make the statement and share with the public that the county has raised the assessment in order to cover up a lot of what we do. I want to make it perfectly clear. We do not do assessment. We do not have assessments. Assessments are done by the villages the towns, and the cities. We use that to come up with our total evaluation value of who we are as we do the budget. We are not involved in that process. And I am sorry that someone thought that was the direction to tell the public that we did that in order to raise your taxes. That simply is not the case. It's on record. You can find out anytime, anywhere, talking to any county employee. We do not do assessments. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before we move to our first resolution, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, earlier today, Legislator Walpole had to leave for work. And in between the two meetings, Legislator uh, Michael Yerden has, has uh, <coughs> had to return home. So having said that, I will now move to resolutions and motions of the day. Resolution FP2 by Legislator Martinez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I offer this resolution and urge its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution adopting county budget for the fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2023. Mr. Chairman, make a make a motion. I'll second. Can I amend? Motion to amend. Motion to amend. Okay, we have a second. Legislator Bombardo. Okay, thank you. We move to update 2023 full valuation to seven billion two hundred and twenty-seven million four hundred and seventy-seven thousand and forty-six dollars. This is on a spreadsheet that everyone can see, has, or can get access to of each community and their equalized value. And you will see that that is the total of the end of that column. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any discussion? Legislator Castillo. So he changed from what we have here on the tentative budget. He amended that. I think that's what we're amending. Yeah, that's what we're amending. We are amending the budget. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the amendment? Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22. In favor, zero. Opposed, and three excused. for the amendment. Thank you. <coughs> Motion two. Legislator Stahl. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, move to establish the following revenue expense lines on page two to fund the first year of a new and expanded PTEC Micron and Technical Industry Feeder Program from Turtle American Rescue Art or Plan <coughs> uh, that will help to add 20 additional students to the program over the next six years for a total of at least 100 students in the program. Thank you. Oh, second. Second by Legislator Klein. Any discussion? What line are we talking about? 
We listed there at A1010, 546, You have that in front of you, don't you, sir? That's uh, looking right in right here right now, yeah? Okay. You're raising it to what? That's very funny. Yes, I just want to point out, and all legislators, I hope that you'll heed to this. This PTEC program that we're putting money into, and we've been talking about it for a number of years, how important it is, because it's not just for Micron like this, just with red. I have a company in uh, the town, industrial park in the town of Schuylkill. The plant manager's name is Tim McCurin. I know Tim pretty well because he came through the planning stages when I was on the town board and I got to know him well. And those people, he is looking for people consistently. They can come out of a P-TECH program that not only know how to weld, but to fabricate. He, the company he is the plant manager of is called EJUSA. That doesn't mean a lot to the average Joe or Sally. However, you drive over these things all the time. Because this company is one of the world leaders in making manhole covers, water diversion, castings, that's what they do. Their start and pay there is $65,000 a year. Their benefit package is fabulous. The company used to be on South Bay Road over in Cicero. When they came over to the town of Scruple and put their plan in, there was a question of how many employees they would lose because of the distance. Ironically, out of 120-some employees, they lost two. But they have people there, many, many of them, over 20 years. It's an excellent company to, walk, to be in. I've walked through that plant a couple of times with Tim. You can eat off the floor. It's unbelievable how clean this company is. And it's a good place for a lot of our people to go. And they're, they're looking, and he's constantly in contact with me, what are we doing with the P-TECH program? Because he wants to hire people. And we have the same thing situation with Kudamaki. We have the same situation with our aluminum plant over here. This is a good feeder program. This is an investment for our people and the thing and the great thing to do for our young people. Because not everybody wants to go to college. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to, to um, let you know that I support this. Um, I had the opportunity to go out to the P-TECH program and see exactly what the kids were looking at, actually. Uh, Legislative has are always out there also. Um, it's an amazing program. These are children that uh, normally may not have had that opportunity to go to a four-year school, um, are coming out of high school being offered $60,000, $70,000 um, a year jobs. This is, this is a big asset to our youth and our future in this county. Thank you. <laughs> The reason I, I keep asking questions here is it says motion and then it says expense lines on page two. I'm looking at page two in my tentative budget and it doesn't say anything on here. It does not have 10, 10, 54, 6,500. The, the motion is to establish those lines. They will be on page two in, in the legislative budget. That's why you don't see them. The motion is to create. To establish the okay. It's not established. Okay. I, I, I mean, we didn't get this. I mean, Marie, did you get a copy of this? This here? What come out of the, yeah, what come yeah, out yeah, of the caucus? What came out of the caucus meeting that they had just prior to the meeting? I mean, I got no problem with giving money to PTEC. No. PTEC is a great program. And I'm very much in favor. But it'd be nice if we were in on this, what you're going to do. Thank you very much. I didn't pay for it. She's got it. She's got it. I didn't get it. Maybe you didn't check her mailbox. Thank you. Any other discussion? <laughs> All those are paid. Paul. Mr. Chairman, that's 22 for April. Zero polls and three excuses for the motion. Thank you. Going to motion three <coughs> by Legislator Scanning. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would like to urge us to adopt this new motion. Uh, to update the health insurance budget. Second. We have a second. We have a second by Legislator Solomon. So basically, this is to uh, <coughs> recommendation from the third party administrator, BTAS. We move to amend the following lines in the health insurance. The net levy increase is $441,000. Second. 
Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, <coughs> zero opposed, and please excuse for the motion. Thank you. Now we will move to motion number four by Legislator Gilson. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to amend and update personnel lines attached to reflect the different vacancies, upgrades, and new hires. The corrections have remained since passage of the budget. We have a second. Second. Uh, Legislator Rita. This net levy impact is minus $144,668. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excuse. Thank you. We move now to motion number five. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to motion to amend motion number five, DSS upgrades, to move to modify the 2023 budget to reflect the upgrades approved earlier today in resolutions FP number seven. Net levy impact is $202,538. We have a second by second. Legislator Wilma. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused on motion. Thank you. We have motion number six by Legislator Twist. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer the following motion uh, to amend. And uh, we're going to be moving or adjusting the attorney and staff DWI budgets to comply with the state requirements. As follows, I do want to mention the there is one, two, three <coughs> bullets. So the fourth and fifth bullet, we're going to be changing the numbers from 8,106 to 8,021 for both of those, as well as the last uh, bullet on the bottom. It's going to be number 11655903080 stop D. That is also going to change to 8,021. No impact. I have a second there. We have a second by Legislator uh, Patrick Samuelson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused. Thank you. We move now to motion number seven. Sure. I'd like to Legislator Graff. I'd like to make a motion to update the assigned council budget. I'll no, second it. Grant for $150,000. We'll reduce the line by $150,000. Yes, net impact is negative one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Mr. Chairman, that's twenty-two in favor, zero opposed, and three excused. I move now to motion number eight by Legislator Bombard. Update motion all that A budget. I second. We have a second by Legislator Yurdy. This is a move to amend the office for the aging budget below to transfer $3,375 to cover an increased uh, contract. There is no impact to the levy. Is there any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused. Thank you. We move now to motion number nine by Legislator House. Move to reduce the uh, community college chargeback levy on page 15 by 300,000 by amending lines A2490-5465-00 other payments. Not impact to the community college levy 300,000. Thank you. We have a second. By Legislator Scanlon. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? The legislator correct. I just want to remind people that your levy on your tax bill will vary according to the number of students in your area that are in college. So if you have a hundred of them from Granby and two from Williamstown, your rate will be higher in Granby than it will be in Williamstown. That Specific a, to community college. Yeah, that is a good observation. To the community college. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused on the motion. Thank you. Motion number 10 by Legislator Van uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to amend motion number 10 in the HR budget on pages 25 and 26. 
Move to add five hundred dollars to line A one four three zero dash five one one zero zero retention. Reduce the internal ARPA allocation by amending line A one four three zero dash five four three eight zero zero ARPA. Other fees and services to seventy five thousand and line A one four three zero dash four four zero eight nine zero ARPA ARPA federal fund aid federal aid to others in the amount of eighty nine thousand. The net levy increase is five hundred dollars. Second. Thank you. We have a second by Legislator Solomon. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and <coughs> excuse. Thank you. Motion 11 by Legislator Chesborough with her outside voice. Yes, it is. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to move to amend the probation department as shown below, which is going to re result in a decrease to our tax levy of $48,812. <coughs> this updates the FSOP grant, deletes an unnecessary expenditure, and uses ARPA funds to upgrade technology, resulting in the need for fewer computers to buy and maintain. Net impact to our levy, minus 48812 Thank you. Do we have a second? I second that, Mr. Chairman. Legislator Martino, second. Again, net levy decrease, 48812 Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, there's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused on the motion. Thank you. Motion number 12 by Legislator Twist. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to amend for motion 12, moving all vacation uh, buyback budgets. There's no impact to the levy, we do it every year. I'll second. We have a second by Legislator Barnard. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, it's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused on the motion. Thank you. Motion 13 by Legislator Holtz. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to amend to move to increase the estimated sales tax revenue on page 14 by uh, $300,558. I'd like to second that, Mr. Attorney. Second by Legislator Gilson. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused on the motion. Thank you. Back to the original resolution, as amended by those motions. Legislator Castillo. Motion 14. Uh, I'd like to make a motion on page 1, and I on page 78, line 601-005601, hold the salary at 2022 amount. Make a motion. Yes, we have a second. We have a second. Legislator Schott seconds. <coughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, that's two in favor, 20 opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Castillo. Who we have? Motion 15 now? Sure. Yeah, there we are. Motion 15, uh, page 1, we move lines, I mean, on page 1, lines 1010001 to 1010112, 1 through 1, we move all raises for all legislators. Okay, we have a second. We have a second. Roll call vote, please. Thank you. Any other discussion? Where are we at? Page one. Page uh, one. Page one. Page one. Page. Sorry. Back to page Thank one. So we have a motion made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Michael Yerden said Mark was excused. Herbert Yerden. No. Edward Gilson. No. David Holtz. No. Roy Rehill. Uh, can we change the law? that we just passed 
Make it by a resolution. You just amended the county law. Uh, a local law can only be changed by a local law. So the that that is the point of order. It could be to be ruled out of order. That's correct. Local law. It, the local law that was passed is subject to permissive referendum, so it doesn't take effect until 45 days after adoption. But a local uh, local law may only be amended by local law. So this is <coughs> the local law. Been, you know, it, it, local law doesn't take effect though for 45 days. So why can't we change it now before it goes into effect? You would have to fund the local law. Uh, you would have to fund for the local law if it, it does take effect. It's up to you if you want to reduce the budget, uh, but you'd have to make appropriation to fund it uh, per the local law. In, in the I, I, I believe that he made a motion to uh, amend that law previously. That motion uh, failed, and then we passed the law. Right. I would agree to that. Any other discussion? So there's no vote on this. No vote for it. Any other discussion? So we're back now just to clear the resolution adopting the county budget for the fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2023. Last chance for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 21 in favor, one opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Moving now to Re Resolution FP5 by Legislator Marquino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have this resolution under adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution appropriating funds in the 2023 budget in regards to full funded grant projects. Self explanatory. Typically a housekeeping movie end of the year. Yes, housekeeping. housekeeping. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Moving now to Resolution FP6 by Legislator Martino. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have this resolution and urge its adoption. Yeah, will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution making appropriation for the conduct of county government for the fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2023. Again, housekeeping. Of conduct for next year. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This is Chairman. That's 22 in favor, 0 opposed, and 3 excused. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Resolution GC5 by Legislator Holtz. Mr. Chairman, I offer this resolution for its adoption. Will the clerk please read the heading? Resolution authorizing chairman and clerk to handle all unfinished business through December 31st, 2022. This is the housekeeping issue so we can open up the door come January. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, that's 22 in favor, zero opposed, and three excused. Thank you. Mr. Clerk? <coughs> Uh, yes, uh, usually once the budget is adopted, we report out uh, to the press the annual numbers. Uh, the final tax levy is $44,703,586. Uh, which is $2,000 less than this year's levy. And the generic tax rate is 619, which is 11% decrease from this year. Thank you. Thank you. I think we all, on both sides of the aisle, should be proud of the fact that we're still delivering the same amount of services as last year. We're doing our very absolute best to, uh, to retain and reward the employees that we have. But the fact that we've been able to do that while lowering the cost to the taxpayers is quite commendable. I thank you all. So having said that, now, any unfinished business? Legislator Gilson. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to just uh, publicly um, acknowledge um, the administrator's office, the budget office, all the department of heads for their hard work and diligence going through this, as you mentioned earlier, long process of putting this budget together, reflecting our conservative views and, and financial situation. Thank you. Any other discussion? Legislator Unfinished business. 
And I'm not going to stand up because I don't want somebody to say I'm grandstanding. But uh, it's April, we made a motion on this floor to ask for the resignation of the commissioner of the ESS. So on unfinished business, I ask to get that resignation again. We make a motion to ask for her resignation. I call it. Mr. Chairman, I think we're out of order. What's the out of order? There is no I challenge order. it. I challenge it. Sure, because I challenge it. Where we don't have. I need a vote. I need a challenge. I'm going to give you the challenge. It's out of order. It's out of order because we not, have not waived the rules or any additional resolutions. It's not a resolution. It's a motion. You have to have a resolution to come before this body. Yes, you do, sir. Legislator Evans is correct. Is there any other discussion on our unfinished Please. business? What does it say? Where does it say that I can't make a motion on this floor? Rich, do I, can I make a motion on this floor to get a second and get it voted on? It's supposed to be reduced to writing. It's in the rules of the legislature. The judge made a ruling on that. What's your, he's made a ruling. He's made a ruling, but is the ruling correct? That's what I'm asking he's, you. He's running a meeting. He's not a not, no, I'm asking you by, you know, Robert's rules, is it correct? That's what I'm asking you, Mr. Mr. County Attorney. <laughs> he's made a ruling on your motion. And he's ruled it out of order. Yeah, but I'm to be entered, well, he's, he runs the meeting. I need a second on my challenge. Let the speaker press. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for adjournment. <coughs> no. I made a motion. Yeah. I challenged your, your you're out of order. I challenged your order. Well, no, honestly, sir, we saw a miscellaneous set. You say that one? This is miscellaneous <laughs> Sir, I've ruled on that order. Mr. Mr. Legislator Rito. Well, my challenge, I need to sign. Mr. Chairman, I have a copy of the rules of the legislature right here. And it says presentation of motions. No motion shall be received except as here and specified. And that it needs to be committed to writing or presented through a committee. The complete list is right here. Mr. Kostiga, I can see the rules. Thank you. So the ruling stands. So now moving on. Is there any other unfinished business? Oh, we didn't rule that way in April, but now we're ruling that way today. Is there any miscellaneous business? I don't know why you didn't have meetings. There being no miscellaneous business, I would entertain the appropriate motion. I repeat the motion. motion. Do we have a second? second. The meeting is adjourned. Now, the public comment period. <coughs> Legislator Evans. period of the meeting. Um, the standard format that we've used for the last 12 some odd years is in play. So if you, I call your name, you come forward, you have five minutes to speak. And I believe it's Kayla Van Brocklin. I'm a senior social welfare examiner at the Department of Social Services. I've been employed with the county for eight and a half years, and I am currently a grade nine employee. I'm truly proud to have said all of that. I'm proud of the work I do and the employees who I work alongside of. The work we do is important and meaningful. Every day we get to say we have helped someone in need. I know many of you don't view our jobs the way I do. You see the generational <coughs> issues and the entitlement. However, when you sit in our chairs and do the work, you realize the vast majority of our clients are working families trying to get by. Nonetheless, that is not what I'm here to talk about. I am here as a supervisor that is concerned about the turnover. I'm here as a friend that is worried for her coworkers who express their financial struggles and the mental health tolls. Lastly, I am here as a mother who is fighting between staying at a job I love and am proud of and finding new employment that can promise my daughter more. I've been a supervisor for a little over a year. I supervise our front desk that welcomes everyone into our building. This includes yourselves when you come to visit. The staff that sit at our front desks are entirely entry-level positions. I have three new typists in this position, currently earning $15.56 an hour. 
Let that sink in. We are entering 2023. <coughs> Gas and grocery expenses are out of hand, and our employees are starting out at $15.56 an hour. One of my new employees was working the front desk on a day one of our clients became upset, pulled a knife, and began cutting himself when our parking lot. We had to do incident reports and discuss if she needed to speak with a counselor after witnessing this. She makes $15.56 an hour. Our clients are fighting mental health and addiction. Their <coughs> actions are not predictable. We have armed security in our building that have to walk clients out daily. Within the last year, my staff have witnessed numerous people be arrested, fights between clients, one of our deputies being punched. This is an ongoing issue. How long do we expect to want people to want to work in these situations while making 1556? These specific situations <coughs> don't include our days of no heat in the building. Rule is you have to stay or use your accruals. No running water, have to stay or use your accruals. No electricity, you have to stay or use your accruals. Tell me, do you want to work in these situations making 1556 an hour? Did you know we had three? And I mean that, only three people show up to take our social welfare exam. We have more openings than potential candidates. Maybe this is due to our starting rates being equivalent to any retail store. I say that I'm a supervisor who has been in this county for eight and a half years. My current wage is 22 24 an hour. As a person who has knowledge, who has gone through three promotions, I am making 22 24 an hour. We have no incentive to stay. In January, my raise of 3% equates to 63 cents. These wages do not promote retention. My husband begs me to leave. My parents encourage me to leave. I often think of how it could be in another person to leave Oswego County, go to Onondaga County, and make thousands more. The only reason I stay is for my coworkers. We fight the good fight together. I have true concerns that many of our seasoned staff are waiting to see how you respond to our MOA and the upcoming contract. I fear if you don't step up and do what is needed, Oswego County will see workers leaving in waves. In the month of November, our county had over 800 SNAP applications and over 800 HEAP applications and we are working short staffed. This has direct impact on our clients, the people who vote you into your positions. We have reached out pleading for help. We hear our, how our union isn't doing good enough. We hear how there's budgets to be considered. We hear nothing from most of you. I understand we have a budget. However, I understand you just voted yourselves a race tonight. I understand we have a union. <laughs> Let me say, they are stepping up. They are communicating and as a whole, we are learning to do better. But why are you dependent on our union? You have the ability to offer fair wages. You have the ability to review the MOA our union presented to you weeks ago that you just responded to us today about. At some point, you need to acknowledge that this serious problem across the county, not just in our building, you may want, not want to raise taxes. You may not want to just throw money at the problem. But let's face it, this problem isn't going away. This union is growing strong. We will continue to work together. To have our voices heard, the only people that have the ability to fix these issues are you. You can't blame the global economy. You can't blame your uni our union. We know what our MOA is asking. We know the bonuses are being paid. We know that you all gave yourselves a raise. Lastly, we know there's power in numbers, and we know your election year is coming. Thank you. Shauna Reddick, please come forward. Shauna's still here. She made, she spoke a couple times. She made a lot. Oh, there she is. Thanks. No, I'm not from around here, so when I heard that they called this the land of Oz. I'm like, oh, it must be magical because they call us Pennsylvanians or Butlerites because I'm from Butler. But I realized that wasn't the case. It wasn't magical. Uh, I seen the good witches, the bad witches, the flying monkeys, the whole thing. Along with the yellow brick road, there is no end. There is no going home because we're stuck in this nightmare. And it's not just us, the public, but the caseworkers as well. And as you all know, I run that Oswego County Corruption, and I absolutely hate it, because that is not the kind of person I am. But after Jordan's case, like I said before, that 
I realized there were some problems that needed to be addressed. Okay, sorry. Um, and it's just really disheartening that I would be more than willing to delete that whole thing. But I would like to see, and along with many other people, changes, real changes, and real effort in this county. And along with the caseworkers who need paid, like I've discussed before, it's just not fair for them. And with the lack of people that are in it, I, I can't imagine, like I had the bruise earlier, can you imagine more kids suffering like that? That's what really breaks my heart. I don't want to see people suffer, and I know you guys don't too. But you guys all have a part to play. This is your role. You are supposed to represent the people and help them, and it doesn't really seem like you're doing that. And it hurts me when I'm hearing people literally telling me their stories or sharing their evidence, and it's like, why wouldn't you want to help your people? And the caseworkers, why wouldn't you want to help them? They're helping kids that are severely abused and they're dying. I don't see why you wouldn't want to help your workers or people who work in this county. There's lack of staff in CPS, lack of staff in 911 calls or the staff that takes care of it. Like, why wouldn't you want that to help them and to make this county better? It's going to end up being dug into a hole where you're not going to climb out of it. I really hope that you see things differently, and I really hope that you make the right decisions concerning this county, the public, and the CPS workers. I had a lot more to say, but I, don't, I just don't think I can say it, but I hope that you guys really reconsider and think about what everybody's come up here to say. It's not fair that their families are suffering. I have five children, and even though they're not home, I'm still helping taking care of them, even though we're still paying child support every week. And it's not fair that because of lack of staff, these people don't get to spend time with their families. I miss mine every day. I don't get to see my younger boys. I don't get to raise them. So can you imagine the caseworkers who have to work longer hours they're not getting to spend time with their families or their children or watch them grow up and do all the things that they should be able to see doing. Um, but that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. That actually concludes our meeting for today. Uh, I guess I'd like to just say in the, in the spirit of the holidays, Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. I know we've differed at times. Our temperature gets higher at times for one another. But again, for my family and yours, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, Chairman, I think you do have one more person on the list. Tiffany, oh, Tiffany Bivens. Very bad, very bad. My fault. My fault. No um, again, I apologize. <coughs> Tiffany Bivens. Sorry, it wasn't intentional. <coughs> Good evening. I know the impending weather is a cause for concern, so I'll keep it short and sweet um, out of an abundance of respect for your time. Uh, with that being said, I'm Tiffany Bivens. I have supervised the call center at DSS for the last 13 months. I've been employed there for 10 and a half years total, a grand total of 12 years in human services. What a great opportunity to work with some wonderful humans and be able to assist so many vulnerable individuals on a day-to-day -day basis. It is no surprise that DSS is struggling. It has been made abundantly clear to this legislature and the prior legislature that a primary fix to this is a sufficient increase in wages. The vulnerability and facts that so many DSS staff have presented you with overwhelmingly supports this. At this point, your option to renegotiate MOA feels a little bit like lip service because your actions up until this point has not built a stable level of credibility with us. At this time, I can only surmise that this is merely a matter of political chess, and when it comes to the individuals in our community, both workforce and clients, that is simply not acceptable for me. As a registered Republican, this 92% majority Republican legislature makes me embarrassed to admit that, and I quite honestly never thought those words would come out of my mouth given my level of fiscal conservatism. Therefore, the only plausible solution that I can think of is to flip it. Activate, educate, and mobilize. 
We can see the clear differences between this county and other counties such as Onondaga, where the legislature invests in both their employee infrastructure and community. Oswego County deserves that, and I will personally devote my spare time to assist with making that happen, regardless of how many terms it may take. We don't give up and we don't give in, and we will hold the line and make sense of our C or make use of our CSEA dues to make it happen. With that being said, I hope you have a great holiday, and I hope that the third pay increase feels very well deserved. Thank you. And the, uh, knowing that I had almost overlooked uh, her, is there any other people with public comments for today? All right, thank you.